2024 DRS Hot Stove Show is sponsored by the Double White, locally owned and operated, located at 421 St. Joseph Street, New Market. Open seven days a week with live music, bingo, raffles, and always a good time in downtown New Market. And by Innovative Graphics, your one-stop shop for all things that you need to get you and your team ready to look your best on and off the field this year. Reach out to Jeremy Heidkamp and Gary Shopper for custom uniforms and apparel for local teams and local businesses at 952-926-2441. Welcome into the 2024 DRS Hot Stove Show. Jackson Jurek joined alongside Chris Reavers and our first guest, the DRS president and prior lake manager, Greg Fowey. Greg, how you doing on uh, today? I'm doing great. Uh, looking forward to this hot stove show. Wonderful. We'll jump right into it. Um, basically, just take us through, we'll start on the DRS side of things before we jump into Prior Lake. Take us through, you know, DRS obviously last year taking a step back with two teams being penalized via points and a manager situation. Take us through, you know, expectations for this year and your thoughts on that last year. Well, the DRS is a really good amateur league and one of the best in the class C. So what I'd like to see is for hopefully we get uh, four bids back to the state tournament being that it's so close in Jordan and Bell playing Green Island Shakopee. So with that said, I think we should have those four bids back because we are that competitive. You know, again, last year Webster um, had the situation with the illegal player and then we had the situation where we went over the points total. So we've rectified that, Webster's rectified theirs. And now I think the DRS is ready to compete again for a state title. You put those teams back. And as the president of the DRS, what is your hope that the board realizes for the 2024 season with the DRS league and both of those teams? Well, with the state board has been a long, they have been a long supporter of the DRS and that comes with uh, recent tr state tournaments in New Prague and Faribault and Shakopee. So I'm not as worried about that as I, I wish they would see, I hope that they do see that we are a very competitive league. And even though we went 0 for 3 last year, Union Hill took the eventual state champs Maple Lake down to the wire. So that's also a feather in our cap, I think, in that part. But in years past, we've done very well from the time St. Patrick's in Class C. Um, even Prior Lake made our little run back in 2020, as did Union Hill. New Prague's had good teams over the years, so I think the DRS really competes well. And kind of transitioning into Prior Lake, you guys obviously had to release a couple players, four of them, a couple veterans per se. What are you guys' expectations for this year coming in? Obviously going to be a little bit different in terms of veteranship on the team. We did release a couple veterans, but at the same time, they did not even play last year. So I'm super excited about the number of young players we've got and just their attitudes, the whole deal with their with the way they showed up last year after we were suspended. Now, now, our season was basically over on May 7th last year, but that didn't stop any of the young players from pretty much coming to every game. We had a great, we won the Arlington tournament. We had a blast out there as a team. This year, we've got a, a Field of Dreams uh, in the middle of May. Also, we're going back to the Arlington tournament. So I, I'm, I'm excited for the young guys, and I've also got one new player coming. He's on the high school team now, and he's the brother of one of our guys. So he's going to be, it's going to be fun to play with these guys. So, so Greg, I'll, I'll take it. Um, I know you won't say this, but I will. I, I think if, if the DRS doesn't get, sorry, our region doesn't get the fourth bid reinstalled, it's criminal. Um, I know that having hosted a state tournament and watching some of these teams play, um, I can firmly establish, I mean, and I, I know I'm biased, but I think the DRS it's, it's us and Stearns County are the best C regions in the entire state. So I, I'm not saying, or you're not saying that I am. Um, and I think that that, that that shows when we when we show up to a state tournament game, our, our, our crowds are significant, our teams are relevant, um, and we provide good baseball and it's fun all year. Yeah, do we battle through from late April to uh, <laughs> July? Of course, but then of course, we all support each other as well, which is really, really cool. Um, so I offered that up as uh, editorial comment from the uh, uh, co-host of the show. But anyway, uh, back to you guys in Prior Lake. How are your numbers? Because I'm always curious to get kind of the flavor of whether it's a city like Prior Lake. You guys have a Class B team in, in, in town and a Class C team. So I'm always curious, are you seeing the health of baseball as a whole in the city of Prior Lake really, really good? I see it as very cyclical. And how that works is there are years that the Mudcats have 
22 players showing up consistently. Then there are years the Jays have 22 players showing up consistently. We went through a couple lean years where 20, 2021 and 2022, we pretty much were going with a, a 14 man roster. And that really, we struggled with that, but we did sign a lot of the players out of the high school team two years ago. And that seems to how it runs. And the Jays two years ago signed four other players. So that's kind of how it works for both of us. And I will say this, because we played you guys, obviously, our two league games, but then we also played you guys in the uh, Jordan uh, midseason tournament as well. And I'll say this, I don't have the kid's name offhand, but I think you guys threw some 13-year-old or whatever he was, <laughs> and I was so impressed by the fact that, number one, it was, what, 10 a.m. or 11 a.m. whenever we played each other on, on a Sunday morning, and his poise was, holy crap. Like, he's barely older than my son, and he was facing, you know, a Faribault Laker team that we ended up making the state tournament. I was really impressed. That was really cool. That was Jake Schmidt's son, CJ. Wow. And now he's a sophomore in high school. <laughs> he's uh, six feet tall, but he's 6'4 with his hairdo. So I, I knew I had to mention the hair. Everybody gives him a little grief about that. But, yeah, he's, he's one of the future people around him. But CJ has been with us since he was three years old. That's awesome. And Jake's still playing, and... And we'll go from there. It's always kind of fun when they get to pitch in the same game. That's cool. As the DRS, you know, continues to get more competitive, we've seen this year where, like, Webster, or the last couple of years, Webster has taken a huge step forward. They, they were a team that would be over for how many years, and now all of a sudden they're being talked about as a potential state champion. And the rivalries that are beginning to build between New Prague and Webster, you go to their game, the fans are in it, the players are in it. There's so much chirping. What's that like as a president and as a manager to see that, just the growth of baseball within, you know, the towns around the DRS? Well, in the case of Webster, you saw where – Todd came in and he really expanded his circle of where to go get players from and dipped into that Lakeville connection. And Lakeville doesn't have a team now. There's rumors out there they're going to get a team and a stadium and who knows what's going to happen with all that. But Webster got into getting players who first and foremost want to play baseball. They're fun to play against because they're competitive as all could be. So it's it's just fun to watch. And, you know, Peter Twitty, he's, he's, he's fun to watch. He's fun to play against. Through a no-hitter this year. Perfect, 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 no game. Game. perfect, perfect game. Perfect game. Perfect game. Right. Yeah, so sorry. hats off to that, but, you know, don't don't lose sight of everybody else that's on that team and, and what Mike Prohaska and Brooks means to that team and, and, and just the players they have. So I, I love their youth. I love their, you know, spunk. Basically. Their fan base has been a huge part of that, fan too, base for them to huge. be able to stick through, you know, everything that they've gone through to now being talked about. Like, you know, the first year they went to state, you know, in Faribault when they did go to state and they made a huge run leaning on Twitey and now being able to go back to state, you know, maybe this year, it's going to be fun to watch them just as another member of the DRS. And as the league president, I think it's fun to see, and Chris has talked about the balance of the league before. So over the past 10 years, and sorry to say this, but Lonsdale might be the only team that has not made the state tournament. So that's... And they were and, close. And they've been close. They were what? two runs away from being there this year yep. against you four, guys, right? Four, yep. four, four yeah. runs, I'm sorry. So, Vesley making it last year was, was just, awesome. I think, great for the league. It was awesome. Now, as we transition from 2024 into 2025 and how the state has now made a third class and we're all going to be revamped into A, B, and C, what does that mean for the DRS? I'm not sure. Could I be the president that either dissolves the league or am I the president that makes this league go stronger and farther? So, and I have a couple thoughts on both of those, but the one being as we go stronger farther is we're going to have, we might have two Class A teams in Prior Lake and Shakopee that have to play with uh, New Market, Elko, and um, St. Patrick. And then you could have a middle class in there. And then the smaller cities such as uh, Vesley, I know right there, would not have enough population to be in the upper part. And talking with some state board members, the, the Class C, which will be 1 to 19 points, that state tournament has the majority of teams in the state that's 200 teams and then the the new class b which is uh a lot of what our league is that's going to have 20 to 35 points so my team personally does not fall into this so but there are exceptions to go ask for in november at the meeting so we'll find out if we have to play class a for a couple years and get our butts kicked then we'll have to do that but that's also up to the state to determine where they're placing teams to. 
as of right now, heading into the 2024 season, what are your thoughts on, you know, being a Class C team, being a president of a Class C league, having to play those Class B teams and those wins and losses being a part of your record? They are part of our record. Actually, this year we have decided that those will not count in the standings compared to years past. And I'm hoping that gets us back to a competitive balance where we're playing the game for the rivalry and not for the just just the game in the standings. So, and, and what I mean by that, I still think it's fun to play at Newmarket, at Elko, at St. Patrick. Playing a night game at St. Patrick is fantastic. But at the same time, none of us want to get our butts kicked in 25 to 2. So do you think that that will be debated at tonight's meeting? That will not be debated at tonight's <laughs> meeting. As we had our fall meeting, if anybody was, as you two were here, I believe, yep. you, Jack Spina, yeah. it was a four and a half uh, day meeting, not hour, but four and a half day meeting. No, I'm just, I'm just in jest. But um, it, it's, it's one of these things going forward. So as we move to that three classes next year, it could really be a positive for the league because at the same time, not only will the league be upended, the regions will be also. So could we be going to a region playing Jordan, Belle Plaine? Could the other teams be going with a Morristown, Waterville, um, and really create some rivalries? And this, I, I've been around a long time, but there were some great rivalries back from before pre-2011. Our first state tournament at Prior Lake was very rewarding based on the fact that we had to go down to Cannon Falls twice in five days and beat them. And, and we did. And that was rewarding. That's the that's heyday cool. of Keith Myers. And that's a legendary that's name. Cool. As we transition to this year and years beyond, what are your hopes for the DRS and just town ball as a whole? I hope that we still keep enjoying what we're doing and we keep the rivalries that need to be kept and that we play each other. I, th I think it's very important that we recognize that Vesley is as important to New Market as New Market is to Montgomery and Vice and all this. And Shakopee, I know, has struggled sometimes in the past of having enough people, but at the same time, I really think Ben's got it going in the right direction. Yeah, so, I mean, uh, last year they beat New Prague in one of the most back and forth yeah. games that, you know, we weren't there. We were at the Faribault Montgomery game, but just paying attention online, and it's like, wow, everybody's talking about it in the stands at a completely different game about a Shockby team that should be nowhere close to beating New Prague, and they beat them on their home turf against some of their best pitchers is great to see for the league. And they really gave Faribault a run for their money in that first game. And oh, I'll say. Faribault sitting with Jake Patrishka on the back end going like, do we have to use them tonight or not? That was almost a thought. So it was fun watching them play. And then again, they, they were competitive in you know, their final game of the season. So I enjoyed watching that. I love, Bill Dunker and I are friends, and I enjoy the heck out of watching what Bill has done with Vesely. I do. And it's so much fun to talk baseball It represents with him about everything that. that's great about town baseball. Yes. Seriously. We all love Billy. I mean, I've known Billy for 25 years. It's awesome. It's been great yeah. since he's took over the yeah. team. I mean, exactly. I love being under him. In our situation, probably like we have old guys, we have brand new guys. We have we have a 16 year old, a 15 year old. Yeah. So we we have a lot of variety of players, and with the variety of players comes a lot of fun, and it becomes a lot of respect between young guys, old guys, and just it's just encouraging to watch what people. Baseball is one of those funny games where you can be 40 and you can be 18 and it doesn't matter. It just, it's one of those things. I remember before we wrap things up, there was a game three between Prior Lake and Vesley. And I want to say you had a Jake Schmidt, which is, or a, it was a Schmidt, but I don't remember who it was going against a 17 year old for us on Vesley toe to toe the whole nine innings. <laughs> awesome. And I think it was a one run game or two run game. And it was crazy to see. Here's a 40-plus-year-old going against a 17-year-old, and I want to say it was Kelsey who had just had the kid the night before Yes, and still was there, <laughs> and that storyline is exactly wow. what Town Ball is because wow. that's perfect. The only correction on that story, it was game two. Game two. <laughs> well, there you go. So that's awesome. Had to ruin the story. But that was, He's sorry, right, Jackson. So, no, you're right. That, but it was, uh, you're right about that. That was a fun night in Vesely that, that all happened on, so it was great times. No. All right. Well, that's a great opener. There's a lot of good stuff in there. So we appreciate you joining us. That's going to start our 2024 DRS Hop Stove Show with 2024 kicking off. We will have our vice president and manager of Montgomery, Greg Westerman, coming up after the break. Don't go anywhere.
The 2024 DRS Hot Stove Show is sponsored by Innovative Graphics, your one-stop shop for all things that you need to get you and your team ready to look your best on and off the field this year. Welcome into another segment of the 2024 DRS Hot Stove Show. This time we are joined by Vice President and Montgomery Manager Greg Westerman. Greg, thank you for joining us. Yeah, well, thanks guys. Uh, so we'll start with uh, the DRS as a whole and then we'll jump into Montgomery in a little bit here. But DRS last year, you know, tough, unfortunate way to go into state with only having three bids. Take us through, you know, that process and how uh, hopefully they're getting back to that four bid for 2024. Yeah, it was unfortunate. I think the, the state board's hand was a little bit uh, tough there with only 10 teams in the league. Um, but, I, you know, I... I if we're going to be honest, I think it's going to be doubtful that we get that fourth bid back this year. Um, I think this, this, the information I got from the state board is they look at two criteria to determine state bids for a region. One is the average region attendance for the last three years, which Region 3C is in the top third in that. And then the second criteria they look at is average games played per team in the state tournament the last three years. And Region 3C is in the bottom third for that, as we've had some early outs uh, in the recent years. So, yeah, I think based on that, I think it's it doesn't look promising. I think that we are likely in the final year probably of Region 3C with the... Uh, of the state board uh, changes to the classifications. Well, I can't speak for the other two teams that made the state tournament last year in 2023, but I can blame our early exit based solely on the three guys we drafted. Um, I'm kidding. After the umpire. <laughs> yes. Yeah. No, but I, I mean, I, I guess I get that. In, in all seriousness, I guess I get that. Um, but at the same time, I've said this repeatedly on this show, like I'm going to take our league top to bottom yeah. over – you know, I know Stearns County is always strong, um, and you know the the, the I, I'm escaping the name, but the the region with you know Plato and and those guys, yeah, yeah that's that 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 region's always really strong as well, yeah. and they show up well. But I'll take our league against anyone. Yeah, we just unfortunately have had some close game losses yeah. that haven't gone the league's way. I think that could have flipped that, but yeah, I think it'll it'll be tough, and I think we'll right, hopefully the the location and the proximity to the DRS for sure. region 3C can help uh, yep. help flip that. So. And definitely getting Webster back next year because, yeah. you know, two years ago making a run to Labor Day weekend and, you know, obviously their team being one of the teams that they're expected to be there Labor Day weekend and be in the running for a state championship. So for sure. no doubt will definitely uh, help us. Let's transition into Montgomery baseball. The Mallards as a whole – Two years ago, making it to the state tournament, obviously one of those teams that you, and we've said this across the board and across the show so far, you love when a team like Montgomery makes it the state tournament because they represent DRS baseball and town baseball so well. So take us through, you know, that year for the yeah. Mallards. Yeah, it was a good year. That was my first year back managing, and uh, it really was just to roll the ball out and let the guys play, right? It's a team yeah. full of full of veterans and, uh, and quality players, and... So it, it was really set up pretty well for that. And, uh, you know, a lot of it come, sometimes comes down to how does your season, how does your schedule lay out? How do, how do your rainouts lay out? And how does, it, how does that work for your pitching? Do you get jammed up with five games in six days? And for sure. right, things, things kind of fell our way that year. Last year, things didn't fall our way, and the schedule got tough. And some injuries and a few guys out of town and some guys not, not playing. And so, you know, it's, it's like... Chris was saying the league is tough top to bottom. Oh, for sure. Right? Yeah. And if you don't, if you're not on your A game every night, um, and you don't have depth throughout the year to overcome some injuries and and life, right? As your as your roster gets older, your guys got yep. more conflicts and other stuff that they do, and they right, the be getting to 25 games in a summer isn't realistic to manage your 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 ball life balance, and uh, you need you need depth. That's where we're kind of work ourselves too. Right? We get the get the roster more full with you know with quality backups and right just pushing guys at positions and a little bit more depth so that we're better positioned to uh, to handle those things when they come. Up. When I can say this, you know, with you guys making the state tournament in 2022, no one shed a tear more than this guy did, <laughs> who was monitoring beer sales at the 2022 state amateur tournament. In fact. I will give the Montgomery Mallard fan base credit because they were the ones that inspired the chart in which we kept track of the fan base's beer sales. It was 
all because of the Montgomery Mallard fan base because they shredded the competition in that regard and it was not even close including the teams that kept playing throughout the course of the entire tournament so kudos yeah. to the yeah. kudos to the duck fan base unfortunately they, we were one of those one and done, yeah. uh, one and done <laughs> yeah. problems, but they right? kept but coming yeah. back yeah they did they kept showing up it was awesome so take us through, you had mentioned the roster a little yeah. bit. You guys have been one of the busier teams so far in terms of signees and releasing players so far, but talk about maybe a couple guys that you were sorry to see leave that maybe have stepped away from the game due to retirement or just no longer interested, and then a couple of those guys that you're expecting to fill those shoes or play bigger roles so far this year. Yeah, yeah, a big chunk of our roster activity has just been clean up. We had guys to... Uh, to clean up off the roster that weren't playing. And I think the primarily uh, not back this year that's been a contributor for us in the past is Tyler Bednar. He's retired. He's not playing. And we're putting a lot of years uh, as manager and player. Uh, yep. Plug uh, May 5th home game against Faribault will be Tyler Bednar Appreciation Day. So we'll uh, take some time to recognize Tyler for his efforts. Um, and then, uh, yeah, we've got, uh, you know, we had two pitchers last year that weren't around. Robbie Marshall was working in... Uh, Sudan, Minnesota, and was gone all summer. And Ted Christian took the had to take the summer off, so they're both back this year and available. Um, and then we've had uh, Max Krautkammer, one of our high school pitchers, is now a senior, so he'll be available much more this summer with a limited Legion schedule that he has in the past. And so, yeah, the arms are are, are looking deep. And of course, Johnny Krochuk is you know Mr. Mallard. He's around for us too. And uh, and. Derek Christensen, who threw a lot of innings for us last year, and he'll turn the calendar to 40 this year, but is still uh, is that right? still churning. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Good for him. He's a good ball player. Yeah. So yeah, and then we've we've signed a few young players. We have a uh, have a uh, a kid, uh, Brandon Gens, who pitches for Apple Valley. His dad uh, and and grandpa are from the center, so he's uh, coming back to his roots to play a little cool. bit and. Got a, got a high school kid, Nate Blaschko, that, uh, that's going to help us. And uh, Nick Worm, a legendary mallet, is back to uh, to give it a little swing and hang out again. So that's awesome. going to be fun to have Nick around. He's been a been a great guy just at practice, uh, you know, working with the younger kids and going through stuff. So, he, yeah, I'm sure he's going to be able to play and we'll be able to go. But having that, uh, his uh, his mind around is, is great. And then, awesome. And then, you know, once in a while you fall into guys. And, uh, and uh, we fell into a guy who's... Uh, family moved to town with his wife and works at, his wife works at the bank locally and uh um he's a uh, former former chanhassen redford uh matt smith oh who, nice. uh, yeah who's, okay. who's gonna who's gonna get back at it hasn't played for four or five years and gonna wants to get back into town That's ball and uh, awesome. so yeah this, so i think we're setting up uh to have a, a pretty pretty good deep depth so we've added some games to the roster schedule we haven't played many exhibition games the last few years and we've added six or seven extra games this year so we can make sure we keep everybody uh fresh and uh and active good sounds like uh you know chris the drs just continues to grow we've said it so so much already but just like the competition level continues to grow here in the drs across the board speak on that a little bit for the 2024 season it almost seems like this has the potential or the making to be the most competitive year in terms of only three bids it sounds like for state tournament and it seems like everybody continues to be adding these pieces and getting better what's that going to be uh expectation wise for you guys yeah i think it's good right like i said earlier you're gonna have to be ready to play every game you come right there are no soft games in the drs every game every game could be a potential loss and every game could be a potential win depending on how how you perform that day right and and getting getting guys to the ballpark getting guys who want to be there and getting good participation is is key because the season's a grind it's a long year right we play 22 league games to uh to grind it out and come down to uh win two or three games in the region and their whole season is a uh, success or failure that is if that. all those b guys would stop wanting to play us all the time <laughs> they're in the background for those of you listening to this <laughs> um any uh last closing thoughts here before we wrap it up or no i think it's just great i think you know what you guys are doing in jackson what you're working on from a social media standpoint what picking up what mike stika had started right those are the things that are getting this league to grow right 100%. the presence and the and yep. the and the touch and kind of the modernizing of the league yep. right I, I see fan bases around growing 
and and the, the the quality of baseball is improving but it all comes from from that right yep. teams look sharper when they've got fresh uniforms and they're making a little more money because a few more people are coming to the ballpark and it just snowballs and i think this ability to reach fans the way we do now yep. uh is so much better than what we what we've done in the past like my i, I started with this mess in 1991 and it's uh it's significantly different and much better no doubt now so yeah. thank you yeah for sure and uh thank you for joining us on this 2024 hot stove show that's been vice president and montgomery mallard manager greg westerman that's his segment of the 2024 show we'll be right back with another one after the break the 2024 DRS Hot Stove Show is sponsored by The Double Wide, locally owned and operated, located at 421 St. Joseph Street, New Market. Welcome back to another DRS Hot Stove segment for the year of 2024, this time joined by Webster manager Todd Klein. Todd, how are you doing this tonight? Real good. How are you doing? I'm all right. So obviously the big storyline that we're just going to have to get out of the way right away is the 2023 season. And for you as a manager, is it more or less – Hey, it happened. We're going to focus on 2024, and we're going to try and make a run at uh, the state tournament this year. Is there still some uh, bittersweet moments after last year? I personally have turned the page on 2023. Um, the players, I can't say the same for them, uh, but it's definitely our goal this year is to go and make a deep run into the state tournament. I want to follow that up, and I don't want to put words in your mouth, Todd, yep. you know, because I've been around baseball my entire life, and there's nothing better as a coach than a team with a chip on its shoulder. And that can be a massive motivating force that you didn't really plan for, you didn't really ask for, but it's there. And I'll be honest, um, you know, I, I can speak as, as a guy that's part of the team that won the region last year, you know, now that Webster is eligible again this year for postseason play and a guy that lives in Jordan, um, everyone's saying, watch out for the Sox. Yeah, I don't I don't, I don't want to go in <laughs> too cocksure, but um, yeah, that's 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 the goal is, yeah. you know, the guys, do they have a chip on their shoulder? Sure. We had a chip on our shoulder last year. That's how we kept together. That's how we finished the season off. That's how we had a, a very good record in the DRS League. Um, I challenged all the players last year to stick with it, and they did, which is uh, a commandment to them because uh, it could have been real easy for a lot of guys to basically say, screw it, I'm not playing ball for the rest sure. of the summer. For sure. Um, but they took it as a challenge, and I said, hey, let's win every game. And that's kind of what we did. So let's talk about your field. I know you guys have done a lot in the years just that I've been a part of when Fairville joined the DRS back in 2011 or whatever it was. Yep. Um, the, the improvements uh, at the Coliseum, as we the like Coliseum, to call it. Coliseum, yeah. Um, talk about that a little bit. Uh, we we got uh, irrigation last year, and uh, that was that's a major thing, especially with going through two years of drought or three years, whatever we've been through. Um, field's not there yet, uh, but... It's definitely an improvement. Um, we really don't have anything major going on this year with the field. Uh, new bullpens, which basically we just had a dirt mound for several years, but uh, just had met a guy on Saturday um, for new bullpen mounds. Um, so that's kind of where we're at right now out there. I think there's some seating stuff. There's some ADA stuff that is going on. I think that's kind of the... The way of the world right now is ADA compliant stuff. Yep. So we're going to have some concrete put in. I don't know if that's happening prior to the season. I think that's at the end of the season. They're doing some ramps and stuff like that. Uh, but seating definitely needs to ramp up because our fan base has kind of grown over Tremendously. the past four Tremendous. years yeah, since, uh, since I took over. Um, we've, we definitely bring in pretty good crowds, which is it's it's great. It's great for... Webster baseball and great well, it's work. good for the league. The I, league yeah. I mean, honestly, I, I remember when we, you know, first kind of got on the scene in 2014 when we made our run at in Jordan. Oddly enough, 10 years ago, it's fun when there's balance like that, and yeah. it's fun to see teams that you know, Vesley last year, uh, mm -hmm. you know, 21, 21 years, right? 21 years. Yep. Yeah. It's, it's, it's fun to watch other teams kind of get a taste of that pie Absolutely. because there's really nothing as a, as guys that, you know, again, we don't do this cause we make money, right? We do this cause we love baseball. And so it's kind of fun to watch 
other teams and other fan bases kind of get that taste for the first time. And oftentimes when those teams get there, they have a little success because they're energized. This right. isn't routine. This isn't normal for them. And it's, it's kind of cool to watch. Back to your uh, baseball team. You guys are, you know, before last year into the final eight, leading on Peter Twighty, much of the same this year with baseball. Talk about him. Threw a perfect game for Winona earlier this year. Got to see that. Just uh, talk about him and a couple other players that you're expecting to lead the Webster Sox this year. Sure. Uh, so Peter's a senior this year. Um, so this is his last year for collegiate baseball, which excites me as a coach that waits for Peter until he shows up late May, sometimes early June. And he's on a pitch uh, counter nap right now. Yeah, it, yeah <laughs> or something like that. Right, right. Um, but, yeah, Peter is uh, – he is. Uh, he had a little bit of a, a little bit of a back injury last year, um, that kind of held him out a lot of games second half of the year. But uh, I've spoken to him, watched some games, and he said uh, his health wise, he he was doing real good, and uh, looked kind of for the same out of him. Um, some of our younger pitchers last year that kind of got introduced to the team, Ryan Joyner is down in. It's Rockhurst, uh, Kansas, or Missouri. Okay. And he's pitching down there, and he's actually getting some innings now. Um, tall, lanky kid that brings it from, like, three-quarter to half, and you have no clue where the ball is going. So, well, good. That's fun as a hit. Yeah, it's really real fun. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's tough to catch him. I, the good gets I, better. I, right. Yeah, I, I refuse to catch him. Um, and then Jackson Rents, uh, he's down at Mankato, and I believe he's red-shirted this year. But uh, he's getting some valuable instructions from uh, that coaching staff down there. So those three guys are really going to kind of pony the load. Um, Nick Dorfman's back again. He's uh, kind of a elder statesman. Um, he uh, he's going to be more of a shorter kind of appearance. Uh, beginning of the year last year, he kind of shouldered the burden until the college guys came back. But this year, I'm going to kind of limit his innings a little bit and kind of save him towards the end. Um, that way. He can, he can have uh, a lot more productive innings later in the year. So I, I said this, you know, when, when Billy joined us from Vesley, that, you know, Vesley and you guys and Webster are always, I have said it, in that interesting spot where, because of the radius, you guys can yep. really draw from, from good programs and good sure. areas. I've, I've always contended that for, for, uh, to a certain degree. So where your core guys, like where are you normally drawing guys from? So I guess younger guys now is uh, Lakeville North um, is uh, kind of the team that I've drawn sure. from. from. Sure. Uh, signed another kid this year, Jacob Hammer, um, the pit, pitcher, infield, outfield, but really he's going to, I'm going to kind of be focusing on pitching for Jacob. Another young arm that, uh, a lively arm. Um, and then some of my older guys are all from New Prague. My son graduated from New Prague, Jake Ackness, and uh, you know, his buddies, Brooke Brahaska, uh, Augie Isaacson, Cully Smith. Those are kind of like the New Prague core from when I coached when they were in the view. Sure. Uh, but you know what? The phones ring a few times this year that I have not received for players trying to find a home okay. that are from New Prague. Which I never had that the first three years. Okay. So I think uh, success kind of breeds that. So I'm in, I'm interested then. That's it's interesting because I've always said that you know when when you finally break through, like you guys yep. made a state tournament after I forget was it 50, 50 years, whatever it was when you guys first made. Right. Yeah. Um, whatever that was, I, I I at least noticed it just from the Fairbill side of things. Like a lot of teams are calling you because they want yep. you to come because they know this is a good team and they'll probably bring people to come with them too because our, we want to challenge our team. So did you see a lot of that too? A little bit, yeah. 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 But there still was, uh, I mean, I, I, I like this area here is definitely, you have your New Prague guys, you have your Union Hill guys, you have your Vesley guys, you right. have, so on and so forth. So that's still in place, um, which is great. That's just part of the culture out here. Um, but yeah, I've I, I've gotten phone calls from people and Lakeville people. A lot of Lakeville people have hit hit my phone this year, and uh, unfortunately, at some point, you just have to say, "Hey, we're, we're already at all yeah, the I, games." Right? Trying to find innings for everybody is always a tough thing. So, sure. sure. Um, you know, now I'm pushing them on and saying, "Hey, call so and so, or yeah. I'll, I'll provide a number to uh, 
call somebody to maybe hook up with another team. Sure. So, but, yeah. I think that's part of, you know, taking that next step forward. We've seen Webster in the last less than five years just go from really zero to hero in terms of the DRS, 18-3 and three last year. Obviously unfortunate, but this year more than likely going to see much of the same expectations for the 2024 season before we wrap things up for you. Sure. Um, you know what? Another competitive team this year. Uh, I expect us to play good baseball, pitch well and uh work on more power on the hitting end of things but is it more of like uh you know like we'll all assume here because at least then i'm the bad guy if things yep. go south but is it more of like a hey we expect to be there the last weekend of state yeah that's a, that's our goal i mean our goal is to make the labor day weekend and hopefully get further you know um, and that's that's a decent and reasonable expectation yep. for sure. Yeah. Yep. Um, anything short of making it to state, I think the guys would be disappointed. I think I'd be disappointed. Um, but that's good. I mean, that's right, that's what sure. you want. I mean, I mean, I don't I don't think there's a team out there that you know expectations yeah. are to make it to the next round right. and the next round and so on and so forth. But yeah, I've, I I fully expect us to be there in the end and. Some of the signings uh, the last two years, our guys are getting old, and that's a good thing for Webster. Um, you know, you kind of peak in your mid to late twenties, and my team average is more like twenty-two, so we haven't peaked yet as a squad, and uh, I'm excited for that. That's scary. I, I, I have a full squadron of guys graduating college this year. And uh, next year, we're going to hit the ground running. Oh, fantastic. That's yep. great. Good to hear, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, but I will say this. You know, I know when you guys qualified, uh, yep. s- sadly enough, you, no- you knocked us out of yep. our own tournament. But I will say this, and one of the coolest things, and again, back to why town baseball is awesome and why our league, I think, personally is awesome. One of the first people to come up to me after that was Sandman. Yep. After your guys' game. And I love Mike. Like, Mike's yep. one of my favorite people ever. And it was just like... Okay, here's a guy who has devoted so much time to that program, and he was like, "Oh, what a great game! I'm so sorry that you got." And I just thought, "Damn, that's cool!" Like, yeah. I uh, yeah, I'm I'm bummed out. My kids are crying and everything else, but <laughs> but that's just how cool our league is and how cool yep. baseball is. Yeah, and I hope whoever does make it from the DRS this year, we put on a very good showing because sure. we need it as a league. Yep, we need to represent. And it's close to home for a lot of people. Yep. You know, Jordan, Belle Plaine, great locale for us. Yep. And uh, for us to represent this year, we'll set the kind of the pavement for next year then. And, and years and beyond we, that, and for years sure. Beyond. Yeah, yeah, and we need that. So. All righty. Well, thank you very much. We appreciate you joining us for the 2024 DRS Hot Stove Show. We'll be right back with another segment after the break. The 2024 DRS Hot Stove Show is sponsored by Innovative Graphics, your one-stop shop for all things that you need to get you and your team ready to look your best on and off the field this year. Welcome back to another segment of the 2024 DRS Hot Stove Show. Farabolt manager, quote-unquote manager. Let's be clear. Let's be clear. So we'll let Chris Reavers uh, air things out here. Currently, I believe I am the third string first base coach and vice president of team morale. That is my current role. I, I'm just the I, I'm the guy that helps with like, for instance, when we had the state tournament um, fundraising, setting everything up. Um, I just I'm just the guy that hangs out, and they still allow me to have a uniform, and I get to show up for game days. So it's kind of fun. There but now go. that my kids are getting older, it's like, yeah, I think I can be there on Sunday, but we'll see. Well, my question <laughs> is, is who's the president of the team around if you're the vice president? Oh, that would be Coach Felix. Yeah, he's the one that holds, oh, yeah, holds yeah, all yeah. the young guys accountable, okay. so I'm, I'm his vice president. And by the way, I've still never called him by his first name. You never will? No. Won't, won't happen. It's Coach. It's Coach Felix. Yeah. There you go. Uh, <laughs> joining us for this farewell segment is Vesley manager Bill Dunker. Bill, thank you for joining us. Farable last year, regular season champs, postseason champs in the DRS, tough loss against a very tough new Alm Brewer Oof. team. Uh, Jake Pritchka and I, I'm going to blank on the uh, Wilmer Stinger pitcher for new Alm, the lefty. Yeah, I don't remember his name either. I do remember saying, who's this lefty? Why is he slinging gas? And, oh boy, this is going to be a tough day at the plate. 
the thing is, for us personally, like it had been five years. I think our la- our last appearance was in New Prague in 2018. Our last day tournament appearance when I'll I'll say this, and I'm I know I'm biased. It was the best amateur baseball game I've ever been a part of. It was Chris Odegaard. It was Matt Lane. It was one to nothing. We lost in the bottom of the ninth inning to Plato to the eventual team that won the state tournament. Um, so it had been a few years. And, you know, obviously we ran into uh, St. Benedict a couple of times. They knocked us out to, to go to state to, to go to the state tournament. So, again, that, that just speaks to the balance of the league as a whole. But it was a, it was a really fun run, and I'll tell you why. Um, obviously not having to deal with Webster in the postseason, obviously that helps. Webster's probably the class of our Class C portion of our league. Prior Lake not being in it obviously helped. Um, but the, all that being said, um, it was a fun run because of the group of guys that we have. And I mean, our core is so much fun. Now, no longer as a player, but as the assistant first base coach, having my kids now around it, these are the kind of guys you want your kids to be around, which is freaking cool. It really is. And it makes me proud. You know, I was a player for 15 years, uh, was gone for a couple of years, came back as an assistant coach, uh, and now just helping Charlie with kind of the everyday. And it's it's, it's just, I, I love being around it. Obviously, Belfield, in my opinion, is one of the best amateur parks in the state. We showcased that in 2022 um, with Dundas uh, and that other team in, no, I'm kidding, with Meesville. So it was it was fun. I, 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 I'm truly, truly proud of where the program was. So when I first started playing, and I know this is a long answer to your question, so I apologize. But from where we came from in the in the mid to late 90s, and we had some rough years in 2001 to about 2005. And even we had to forfeit a playoff game in, I think, 2007. Like, that's not good. Um, to where it is now, I mean, it's 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 just awesome to be a part of. It really is. So, I think it speaks. Did I answer your question? Yeah. I don't. Okay. <laughs> a couple run-on sentences there, but uh, that's uh, I tend Chris, to do that. Chris Reavers esque for sure. Um, that speaks to the volume of DRS baseball and the way sure. it's transitioning yep. as DRS continues to get better. And you know, Faribault. We'll get into the big topic for Faribault this year is you're losing Jake Patrichka, yep. former MLB pitcher. Definitely the guy you leaned on for on top of the rock at the plate in center field across the board, right? And maybe even more than that on the bench as a morale guy too when it's like, hey, we need to, you know, let's focus up here and let's focus on what we're doing. How do you replace someone like that as he departs Faribault? The easy answer is you don't. I mean, I'll say the same thing about Jake as I will say about Matt Lane when Matt came to our program in 2014. It's easy when your best player on your team obviously played pro ball. (laughs) That helps. But everybody takes their game up a step because they do not in any way want to let that guy down. And I'll say this, I mean, is is Matt or Jake the kind of guy that's going to cuss out a play? No, not at all. But you just know that you're... You have an expectation now stepping onto that field with that guy where whether you're going to Vesley on a on, on a Friday night or a Sunday afternoon or whether you're going to St. Patrick or where, wherever you're going, if, if that guy's on the mound, okay, I, I, I got to hold myself accountable but step my game up a notch, which is really cool. And I'll, I'll go back. 2022, Jake decides he's done playing. We're hosting the state tournament that summer with Dundas. And I'll never forget this. It was our fourth or fifth game of the year. We were undefeated. We were at Elko on a Sunday afternoon. And Terry's not around, so I'll say this. We were crushing them. It was 13-2, to two, and it wasn't that close. We went from Jake started through three innings. This is back, you know, this is the part of the season early where you're playing once a week. So we had Jake throw the first three innings. We had Nate Ross throw the next two innings. We had Jack Helgeson throw two innings and Matt came in to clean up and I remember looking at somebody going who the bleep is going to beat us in class C this year with all this all this pitching Jack Helgeson gets hurt who by the way before all those guys joined us Jack was our number two behind Matt and Jack was a stud not was he still is a stud I love you Jack okay so we go from that Jake gets signed by the twins uh Matt blows out his elbow we lose Jack we're down to Nate Rost and I'm thinking and so 
going from their, your fifth game in the year to we ended up getting beat by St. Bennett. No, sorry, we ended up getting beat by Webster to go to our own state tournament. So that's just how balanced, again, this league is, but how tough it can be where you're like, who is going to beat us in Class C? To We didn't even make, make it out of our own region. So It's like that sometimes, isn't it? Baseball can be a cruel game, Billy. <laughs> it is. But it's but it also it, like you were saying, you know, a little bit ago, that's what makes it so rewarding when you get there. There is no feeling better than, oh my god, the collection of guys that you fought hard with and sweated and drove these hours through cornfields with. It's that's what makes it so freaking rewarding. And that, you know, I, I my, my wife will say all the time, "What, you know, when when we were still in the Southern Mini, why are you driving to Albert Lee on a Sunday night? I got to go." I, I gotta go, and so that's what makes it so rewarding when that moment finally happens. It's just it's it's indescribable. And you are a hundred percent right about you step up your game when it's somebody oh. that you have a lot of respect for. My catcher for years was two time Division three no nope, Division three All American Matthew Pexa. Yeah, you don't let him down. No, you do what he tells you to do. You know, as good as I thought I was, that was the guy. That was the guy that hit 500 and change one year with 10 home runs. You don't let him down. Yeah. You play to that standard or you go somewhere else. I'll never forget this. And Matt wasn't very vocal, but, I mean, Matt was crucial to our resurgence without a doubt. 100%. But I'll never forget, I'm not going to say the team we were playing, and I'm not going to say the player. It was a Friday night. player made a really boneheaded mental mistake out of frustration. Coming back to the dugout. Matt stopped before he got to the dugout, which he never does. It was from the mound to the dugout back, unless he had to go hit. And he looked at the player and he said, we don't do that. That was all it was said. And, and you could see, <laughs> you could see all of us going, whoa. Like for him to say that on a day he was pitching, that was huge. Yeah. yeah. That was cool. Matthew was a little different than Matt Lane, by the way. <laughs> a little more, a little more fire. Uh, yeah, <laughs> just a bit. <laughs> we won't get into detail. Well, Chris, as we uh, transition away from Faribault and them, and into the idea of DRS, sure. The championship game between you and Union Hill was about as competitive oh. as it gets. Yeah. I mean, and that's without Webster. That's without Prior Lake, like you mentioned. You know, we probably don't make the state tournament without Webster and Prior Lake being, you know, penalized for the mistakes that they made. Sure. How does that, you know, transition into this year without knowing if we're going to have three or four bids? I think, well, again, I'm going to say this again, and I don't care if the state board gets mad at me. You all have my cell phone number. Call me. I don't care. The fact that it's even debatable whether or not the DRS or our region is going to get its fourth bid again. I've been to so many state tournament games over the last how many years. Like, there's no reason that this should even be up for debate if all teams remain eligible. I'll, right. Let me preface it by right. saying that. It's just, it's it's not even a question. From top to bottom, I'll take our league against – I mean, I now live in Jordan. You know, I, like, I, I'll, I'll take our league in our region against any others in the state, including, you know, Stearns County. You know, we've had a lot of those matchups in the state tournament where, you know, we lost to Lake Henry to go to the Final Four back in 2017. I was there. Yeah, you, yeah, we drafted you. That's yeah, right. The and, last and so, yeah, thanks a lot. No, I'm kidding. Um, but, but, but again, I, I'm just going to go back to that where, you know, if you're, if you're looking at it just from look at, look at the cities and the communities and all the players that we have just involved in our league, that alone speaks for itself, in my opinion. So... Um, I think, I think I, I sh- we shouldn't worry about that. But I don't also going back to your initial question. It's all about matchups. Okay, who's throwing for that day? Did that guy throw Friday night and now it's a Sunday afternoon? You know what I mean? So it's like a lot of that comes down to how are you setting up your team to face postseason play? And sometimes a team just has your number. For us, a couple po- three postseasons in a row it was St. Benedict. We, we could play against him in the regular season, but it came to the playoffs like, damn it, we can't beat these guys. And it just, it's just, sometimes it just, that's just what happens. That's know? baseball, though. Yeah, for uh, sure. A, a quote sure. that I heard was, the ball doesn't know who's supposed to win the baseball game. That's a great quote. I'm stealing that. 
Well, take well, it. Yeah. Who said it? Take now? it. Actually, a softball coach, Lori Meyer. So okay. you guys definitely know her because she's yeah. been around MSU forever. Yeah. But she said that in an interview I had with her, and she's like, the ball doesn't know who's supposed That's to win the game that day. Perfectly stated. So, it's 100% right. All righty. Well, anything else you got to toss in there? Well, I'd like to give you the full uh, outside of Jake. Um, and, again, you know, I, I, here's what I'll say about Jake. Obviously a guy that – was the closer for the Chicago White Sox, decided to come back home to his hometown. He got us to a state tournament. He's one of the best dudes you could ever, you know, want to be around. Um, and and he, he obviously is, is moving on, and all of us, you know, love the guy to death. And we, not, they're, you know, we, we wish him nothing but the best. Um, and in terms of the, you know, we're, we're going to be a lot younger this year for sure. Um, but, again, I, I, I really like our makeup. I love our core. And um, it's going to be a fun summer, and I, I, I can't wait. Like, even coming here today, it's like, damn, I wish we had a game tonight. Like, I, I can already feel the juices flowing, as I'm sure you guys can as well. So it's just, it's awesome, and I can't wait. I Again, I, I, I love being a part of it, and, and DRS baseball is the best. When this comes out, one week away, so it's going to be fun. That is Chris Reavers, the, uh, I think he said, third string first base coach. Yeah, I think, on, in, uh, I, I'll say this, Grody, Joe Grody, our shortstop, and I guess what would he be now, our number two or number three, uh, whatever number pitcher he is for us. I think he's the one that officially gave me that designation, either him or Charlie Lechnerberg. And by the way, I'll, I'll be remiss if I didn't mention that Charlie, in, in when he took over um, back before he was the varsity baseball coach in Fairville, when he took over, we were literally lifeless, and I'm talking 2008-ish to where the program is now. It's 100% a credit to Charlie Lechtenberg and now Charlie and Joe with the Lakers. So I, 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 I can't speak highly enough of both of them. All righty. Well, thank you very much. Good luck this season, and I uh, look forward to uh, seeing you and talking to you later. That's Chris Reavers of the Fairbolt Lakers. This has been the 2024 Dearest Hot Stove Show. Don't go anywhere. We got one more after the break. The 2024 DRS Hot Stove Show is sponsored by The Double Wide, locally owned and operated, located at 421 St. Joseph Street, New Market. Time for another 2024 DRS Hot Stove Show segment, this time joined by Nick Scheneker, the manager and head coach of the New Prague Orioles. Mr. Scheneker, I uh, feel like back in high school talking to you, but good to have you on. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing well. Good to be on. Good to be on. What was the last time you were called Mr.? Well... I'm a teacher, so <laughs> yeah, 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 maybe, you know, not everybody calls me that, but yeah, I got it a few times today. Most of them. Um, we'll jump into the new Prague Orioles right away. Last year, decent year, finished middle of the pack of the DRS regular season standings, couple of tough games in the postseason. Take us through the uh, 2023 season as head coach and a little bit in depth on the Orioles last year. Yeah, we started well, um, got off to a good start. Um, as the season went on, I mean, it's as, as teams get their guys back, and we got guys back too, but as teams in the, in the DRS start to get some of their college kids and stuff like that, um, it's a tough league from top to bottom. I mean, you, I mean any given day, anybody can beat anybody, um, even if you've got your best guys there. So um, you've got to play well. Um, you've got to stay healthy. We had some injuries here or there. Uh, we had guys that were, you know, kind of busy with some work stuff, and they weren't always able to make it uh, to all the games. And, you know, I think one disappointing thing from last year, uh, we never had our best lineup on the field um, all year long. And that was a little disappointing to know what could have been, but that's the way it is. I think this year we're looking for uh, maybe, you know, a little more commitment out of some guys. And, and one of those things, if, if they're not going to be committed, we're going to play the guys that are are going to show up and are going to be committed. Well, see, I'll say this. I remember early in the season, um, I went down, now that I live in Jordan, so I went down to your guys' game at St. Benedict and watched you play very, very well against the uh, the Bennies that day. And then I remember we played you guys um, on a Sunday afternoon, I don't know, five or six games into the season for us. And we had Jake, and you guys, you guys took it to us really good. And I remember I went to the Jordan Brewer game that afternoon. I said, I think... New Prague is going to be the team to beat in the DRS. And that was obviously early in the season, like you were saying, but I was really impressed with you guys, especially early in the season, for sure. Yeah, and, and we were playing well. We still didn't have all of our guys back at that point either, and we were very excited. I was very excited, and our fans were very excited. Um, one of the guys that was pitching well and pitched well against Fairbow that day was Sam Baker. Yep. Uh, he ends up, I mean, he was, he was lights out for a while, and he ends up um, 
hurting his elbow, and he ended up having Tommy John. So oh he, boy. he will be out this year. He's not able to pitch for Gustavus this year. Um, I know disappointing for him. Um, hopefully he's getting healthy and, and able to make a strong recovery for next year's college season and, and hopefully playing for us again as well. A little bit about last year, and this is not from me. This is from other people, you know, fans. The DRS really took a big step forward in terms of rivalries last year. I know I had heard about you and Webster, you know, getting mouthy with each other. Do you enjoy that kind of baseball on the bench and when you're coaching, or would you rather have it be everybody kind of just play their game and be quiet? I think there's always going to be a little competitiveness when the juices get going, but I I don't like it when, like I'll, I'll tell our guys, don't talk to the other team and cheer for our guys, cheer them on, uh, but don't talk to the other team. I don't want to get, because all of a sudden one team says something, the other's going to say something back, right. and, you know, that leads to some bad blood. So I would prefer it not to be that way. Um, cheer for your own guys. Don't start ripping on other guys. I mean, that was an intense game that we had. Uh, their guy was pitching well. Uh, we had Sam – or we had uh, – we had uh, Baker, Sam Baker, pitching well for us. Um, so it was a fun game, but, I mean, it also was very draining. And, you know, I just – I didn't really like that animosity that was coming out. The, the league as a whole, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's a, it's a, it's a healthy competitiveness in that, yeah, when, when it's July 15th and we're all fighting for that two or three seed or whatever, yeah, it's going to get intense. But you know what? Mousy and I sat next to each other in a state tournament game in, in Bell Plain a couple of years ago, just to, or a playoff, whatever it was. Like, we're all cheering for each other. You know, it's like it's at the end of the day. It's we're all, we're still the same league. We're all still, we all know each other. We either guys played against each other in high school or whatever. And they're all, you know, at the end of the day, it's, it's a healthy competitiveness. Yeah. yeah. And it, I mean, that's one of those things like, no matter who goes to state, like you look at Webster two years ago when they went to state, everybody was happy that they were doing well because it just speaks to, one, they hadn't been there in so long. Yep. You know, Webster was not a team that was supposed to be that team that was in the final eight a year ago before that, and now they're a team where this year it's like they're expected to do well. And I think that's one of those things where, like, we want Faribault to do good. Obviously, you know, Union Hill loses to the eventual state champs in Maple Lake last year. But in a that 17 inning game. Yeah, or in a crazy was, game. Right, yeah. No matter who goes <laughs> to the state tournament or in playoffs, like, we want good competitive baseball. I mean, yeah. the amount of Vesley guys that were at the Montgomery New Prague game was incredible. I mean, we had over half our team there because we want to support other teams and we want to see good baseball. And you only see that in the DRS. And yeah. I think that just speaks, like you said. When your team is fully there and fully committed, it is very hard to beat the New Prague Orioles on any given day. And I think that just speaks to, you know, the coaching top to bottom and the players top to bottom, one through nine, and even the bench. Yeah, and I mean, this this is a strong baseball area. It's, sure. um, you know, I think I counted it up just, a, you know, last year or the year before, and we're still over 100 New Prague graduates playing in the DRS. Wow. And when I tell other, like, people that in other areas they're very surprised and uh you know it's just it's a baseball area so let me ask you about that because i know obviously new prague the high school program is one of the best in the state Let's state see. tournament champs last year yeah for sure and so i'm wondering is that this is going to sound weird and almost oxymoronic but is that a deterrent in some ways for you guys being in town for like well I'm not going to get the chance to play. Or, or is that a battle, or is that not really even an issue where you've got, you know, Vesely, Union Hill, New Prague, and a lot of these teams are kind of drawn from that same pool. What is it? Is that a challenge if it is at all? Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, let's say there's 10 seniors that want to keep playing baseball, and, you, you know, there's always going to be a little struggle over who's going to get those players. Sure. And uh, they, but I mean, it's been that way for 50 years. So it's nothing new. Okay. As we head into the 2024 season for the DRS, what are the expectations for the new Prague Orioles? Well, I don't know if we are necessarily going to be the most talented team in the league. I wouldn't say that. I think talent-wise, we've got some great players. Gavin Bergman, who you were kind of talking about the Benedict game last year, he was throwing strikes and gassing people and yeah. hit Hit three home runs. Two were kind of cheap, but one was probably out at Target There's Field. There's no cheap home runs at and, St. Uh, <laughs> so, I mean, we've got some talented players. Um, 
you know, we're, I think a strength could be pitching for us this year. We've got some guys coming back. Uh, Nathan Sproles was sending me messages here. He's in a, on a vacation in the Caribbean and he was talking about, are we going to practice Sunday? He wants to, you know, he's been at a couple practices throwing a little bit. So hoping to get him back healthy. Uh, Wes Kemming, who didn't play last year up in uh, pitching for St. Scholastica, TJ uh, Berglund's down at St. Mary. So I think pitching can be a strength for us, but we got some scrappers too. I mean, Benny Boothy, Eric Wagner, um, those guys show up and play hard every game. Um, guys like uh, guys like uh, Bo Plasance and Matt Swaber are some young guys who are looking to take a step forward. The Modder brothers, uh, nobody uh, is more intense than Anthony Modder behind the plate, and he works hard. I love pit he works, against he him. works hard every night, and uh, he, uh, I mean, he he wears his emotions on his sleeve. So, um, I mean, these guys are are scrappers, and and we know it's going to be a. And I don't want to forget about James Furness either, who's really. Um, one of those guys is kind of the heart and soul of the team. He's who, the the Wiley yeah, veteran now, yep, man. Yep, Wiley veteran at age 26, <laughs> I think. So, uh, but I mean, he's in great shape. He's been working hard, and he's shown up for every practice this this winter. Um, but I mean, I think last year he was sicker than a dog against you guys, and yep. he might have had like two or three hits off of Patrichka, and he pitched that game yep. and. Um, I mean, he's a guy that will do anything uh, for the team and help the team win. That's awesome. Perfect. Um, as you know, we focus a little bit on the DRS as a whole into 2024. What are your hopes that you see as a very prominent member of the DRS? Obviously, state in 2018, you're bidding up again for, I want to say, 2026. Yep, we're so, hosting in 2026. So hosting in 2026. As the DRS continues to grow, where do you hope the league is when it gets to 2026? Well, I think uh, I think we're moving in the right direction. I think um, you know it's a strong league. Uh, we haven't played as well as we've wanted to in the state tournament the last few years. Uh, certainly, we have a number of teams that can go very deep into the state tournament. We d we had a number of teams go deep in 2018. Yep. We've had a lot of teams go deep other years. Uh, we need to kind of get back to that. We, you know, it's single elimination. Anything can happen in the state tournament. Uh, but that's kind of what I'm looking for is I'd like to see teams, whoever makes it this year, make deep runs into the state tournament. Um, and then, you know, following year, hopefully we can get an extra bid back if we need to and uh, lean into that 2026. All righty. I do want one more plug. We are hosting the Fox 9 uh, Wednesday uh, Has that schedule game of the been week. released yet? I, it, I ha haven't it, it hasn't, but we are hosting on Wednesday, uh, June 5th. Okay, uh, so there you Bragg go. against Waterville. Uh, breaking news for when this is out. Um, uh, April 14th, this will be released. So Wednesday, June 5th against Waterville at what time? 7.30. 7.30? It's always, and it's always cool. I know we got the chance to do it a couple of years ago. And again, they didn't pick a league game, but whatever, it's it's fine. But it's it's a cool production, the fact that they continue to do that and continue to involve the DRS. There's a reason for that. Yeah. yeah. So, awesome. Well, thank you for uh, plugging that because that's new information to us, and I can't wait to uh, share that with everybody that's going to tune in. So that is Nick Scheneker, the manager for the new Prague Orioles, and his thoughts on the uh, Orioles season this upcoming year. We thank you for joining us. We'll be right back with another DRS 2024 Hot Stove Show segment after the break. Don't go anywhere. The 2024 DRS Hot Stove Show is sponsored by Innovative Graphics, your one-stop shop for all things that you need to get you and your team ready to look your best on and off the field this year. Welcome back to the 2024 Hot Stove Show for the DRS League. This time we are joined by Union Hill Manager Dusty Steinhoff. Dusty, thank you for joining us today. Thanks for having me. How, you, uh, how are your expectations for the 2024 season after... I don't want to put the nail in the coffin this early into the segment, but the uh, heartbreaker of a loss to the Maple Lake Lakers last year, the eventual state champs. Yeah, it was a tough one. Um, I think just make us stronger and come back to play uh, play harder. As you guys continue to build, build this year into the 2024 season, Obviously, you're a team that relies a lot on the local talent in New Prague and the local college kids that go. What are your expectations for them this year? Um, those guys are the main core of our team. Um, so we'll uh, fight until we get those guys back. Hopefully it's mid-May. Uh, um, but we got, we got enough local guys that are out of college that should hold the fort until they get back. 
as you guys, you know, last year finished second in the regular season, second in the postseason to Faribault, a couple of tough late losses, especially the championship game in the DRS and then the first round for state. How do you kind of bring those guys back and say, you know, obviously tough losses, but hey, listen, we're still a good team. We're a team that's supposed to be here year in and year out. Uh, we're not losing too many guys, so I think the guys know we can play with the better teams in state, and uh, it left a bad taste in everyone's mouth, so I think we'll be ready this year. Can I ask you a question? Let's back up a little bit, Dusty. You know, you and I go back as players together and everything else. When, when, it's, when someone says Union Hill manager, Dusty, does it still sound weird, or you, how is, how's your adjustment been? Um, it still sounds weird. I still, <laughs> I still get my four games in, so yeah. it's manager slash player for now. Yeah, but it, but it's cool. I know that you know. Obviously, it's not an easy job. I mean, I've been in that role, um, and it's it's thankless uh, to a large degree at a lot of times. And but none of us are doing this because we're getting rich. We all we're doing this because we love the game. And I know that you're a classic example of that very thing. Yeah, it's it's fun. It's. It's a labor of love. Being at the ballpark every Sunday, every couple of days a week, my kids show up now and they love playing. And uh, we started a, a youth team at Union Hill too, so my kids are on those and on that team. And awesome. So it's, I'll be there for a while, I believe. That's cool. Plug that a little bit. The uh, youth team. I mean, obviously, New Prague is Youth Baseball Association is huge. It's a big part of everyone's really team in the core area of the DRS. But now for Union Hill to have that, what's that like? Union Hill used to have it, uh, kind of went away, and now we're starting a, a coach pitch team, uh, six to eight-year-olds, and then next year we're going to do kid pitch and continue with coach pitch. So try to get the youth back. we got plenty of youth kids and players' kids up there, so it should be something growing bigger and bigger. We're going to try it out this year and with one team, and we'll go from there. Don't be stealing any of those kids from Jordan, okay? i got news for you. <laughs> They're um, more than welcome to come. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. Um, back to the DRS, 2024 season, obviously last year only three bids for 2023. Hoping for the 2024 we have four bids. Is that something you want to see to speak towards the volume of the DRS and the level of comp competition here in the DRS? Um, I would like to see it back. I mean, everything's about uh, attendance, and since it's local in Jordan, I think uh, we have four or five teams that could represent the DRS pretty well. So. No doubt. I would uh, I'd like to see it back, and if not, it's going to be a battle like it was last year. As you, you know, everyone's got an opinion about the Prior Lake and Webster situation. From a team perspective and a manager's perspective, give us your thoughts on that. Um, I, I really don't have a comment, I guess. It's just you got to watch your points. I think we'll be sitting pretty high in points, too, to go to maybe the Class B or C or whatever it is this year. Um. I guess you just got to manage your points, manage your players. If you people aren't playing, cut them. And, and you not to get in the game, not sign to put, them. Not to put words in your mouth, Dusty, but it's almost like now where it's because everything's done electronically and everything's done, and everything's monitored to such a degree than it ever was before. Like you really got to stay on top of it, one hundred percent, because the state board now has an entire division. And I'm not even suggesting this is that this is a bad thing in any way, but you know, it, it because of how everything is magnified and the fact that town baseball in general is getting such attention that's a good thing for our product correct that's that's a really good thing that means that um there's so much interest statewide where the fact that we were just talking to mousy the fact that the fox nine has, has now designated an entire night to focusing yeah. amateur baseball that's a really good thing for the league and they've had a drs team in the last five years absolutely so yep. yeah that back to what you said before about the manager it's not showing up to manage the team. It's the back end yep. scheduling and contracts and umpires, and it's a lot of work to do. <laughs> do you think that makes it easier for, you know, obviously a lot of managers across the state aren't tech savvy, more or less. Do you think that's going to make it easier with that transition, or is that going to make it more of a challenge and we're going to see a little humps in the road? Yeah, I think everyone's tech savvy these days, email especially, so I don't think it's going to be an issue at all. Yeah. And it's either it's it's a situation too where it's you need to adapt or you know that that's just that's just the way we do things now yeah. you know the, the the days of you know uh, the, the the long form or whatever else that's that's gone I mean it's it's we're now in a, in a stage where everyone's looking at Twitter to say 
oh, Union Hill's playing Faribault this afternoon. Let's get on the, let's get in the car and go for a ride or, or whatever. It's, it's, and that's what makes our league. And in my opinion, I know I've said this a couple of times, but top to bottom, you know, I'll take our league against basically any other league in the entire state. And our region's one of the best, the best going. And the respect that has statewide, I think, speaks to the volume and, and, and to the, and like I said, to the, to the balance that we have here. Correct. So as, you know, this league kind of transitions back into that four-bid or hopefully that four-bid league, do you expect it to be more of a challenge with Webster and Prior Lake coming back, or do you think that it becomes one of those things, if we do get four bids, it's easier to get to that state tournament level? I think competition's healthy, and it's you know, it's going to be, like I said before, it's going to be a battle. I mean, there's seven eight teams that could make the three spots if we get three spots there's seven eight teams can make four spots so it's so I actually was, any any team can make it for sure yeah and it, and it comes down to matchups who's throwing that day and yeah. whatever else so i i'm always curious because i think i asked mostly the same thing given that you know uni hill vesley new prague you guys are kind of drawn from that same pool of new prague kids does that make your guys's games against each other a little bit more um, is the competition heightened to a degree because a lot of these kids have played with each other for you know yeah, 15 some, years or whatever it's been there's some battles there's some <laughs> uh, people don't like Union Hill and people don't like New Prague people don't like anybody so it's it's the same as same as every probably every team has a teams they don't like sure sure okay I asked Mousy this question too when it does get to that you know chirp level of baseball do you enjoy that as a manager or were you like mouse and he's like i just want people to play the game cheer for their team and not open their mouth towards the other team because if something gets said and then something gets said back to them it you know can open a whole can of worms i'm i'm old school i'm not uh i'm not the chirpy kind of guy so i don't like it a whole lot some of it's okay but once across the line it just what off. happens when you have to remove the assistant first base coach from Fairball from the field uh, I, like last summer? I just walk over and tell him to sit down, and he does. <laughs> <laughs> and he did. So do you do that because Dusty's bigger than you, or do you do that because you just don't want to take him on in a fight, or both? All the above, uh, because I know Dusty could put me into a pretzel hold uh, in about three seconds. But it's also, I, I will say this, because I just have tremendous respect for him as a guy. You know, we've, we've been in how many games against each other over the course of the years. It's just, yeah, I mean, again, that spirited, healthy um, battle that you're going through. And, and again, it's it seems like every year. Fairbone and Union Hill find a way to meet each other in postseason or, or even in the regular season game. We're playing a Friday night game at Bell Field or a Friday night game at Union Hill. I remember a couple of years ago we were playing each other um, to, to get that one seed. And I'll never forget it. It was it was one of the greatest freaking town baseball games we've, I've ever been a part of. And it was it was awesome. Um, and we always know that, oh, we got Union Hill today. All right, it's time to bring it. Yep. And I'm sure they feel the same way when they when they battle us. Yep, yep. And that's the way it should be for every team. Yep. Leave it on the field and have a beer after the game. Yep. On Dusty. Dusty usually buys the first round. Yeah. <laughs> you still owe me money, by the Damn way. Damn it. <laughs> well, we might have to close it down on there before we uh, get anywhere else. So that has been the Union Hill manager, Dusty Steinhoff, taking part in the 2024 DRS Hot Stove Show. We'll be back with another segment after the break. The 2024 DRS Hot Stove Show is sponsored by The Double Wide, locally owned and operated, located at 421 St. Joseph Street, Newmarket. Welcome back to the 2024 DRS Hot Stove Show. This time around, we're going to be joined by Vesley manager Bill Dunker for this part of the Hot Stove Show. Bill, welcome aboard. Thanks for having me, guys. So uh, last year... First year in 21 years that Vesley makes the 2023 state tournament. Take us through the emotions that you had felt as a head coach just to see, you know, myself, everybody else, and basically the big town of Vesley celebrating. Honestly, you could feel relief from the fan base more than anything, I think. Uh, when the ball was caught behind first base, the guys were excited. As, as they should be. Big pile up on the mound. I kind of just stepped out of the dugout and absorbed it. Watched the guys do their thing. I, I don't need to be underneath 25 random 25 Slutty year olds. Year olds. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm good there. <laughs> <laughs> Injuries, you know. Getting a little older. But I just kind of watched it happen. 
And as it was happening, then I got tackled by Greg Spitt from behind, if you didn't know that. He came running down the hill, and he got me, and I thought I was getting attacked by a Lonsdale fan for a minute. And so, anyway, long story short, after the, all the hugging was done, the handshakes were done, man, that was a party that night. The uh, entire year, you know, we look back at the record, 4-17 and 17 in the DRS at that point, going into playoffs, back to the state tournament. It was a grind. I mean, there was a lot of times where guys didn't show up. It wasn't fun to be out on a Wednesday or Friday when we're on the road. How do you as a manager stick with them and stick through that part of the season, the tough part, to reach, you know, at that time, the peak for Vesley? So as the manager, you're the leader. And if you give up, your team will give up right behind you quicker than you will. If I don't stay the course, I can't expect any of the other guys to. So for me to keep pumping up the tires, finding the good in losses is hard for me. It's hard for anybody. But to continue to find what did we do good, even though we struck out 13 times tonight, we still had eight hits, three doubles or something. You, You try to find the good. As we continued through June, we started losing by less and less. No offense, Chris, we had Faribault on the ropes with Petrichka on the mound. Yeah, there's a quote I'll take from Jake when you're done. Yeah, but. okay. Uh, we, had, we had them on the ropes with their guy. We, we, we screwed it up. We made an error late. And it cost us, as they always do. But find the positive. Find what we can build on. And after July 1st came, I think we ran off 10 of 13 and went to state. So a quote from Jake Petrichka, pitcher for Faribault last year was, even though we beat this team tonight, that team will be a state tournament team because they are a tough out. That was from one of your catchers who I know, and he's like, that team will be in the state tournament the way that they're playing, which was crazy to hear from a guy that just has a repertoire that he had, which was awesome to hear, and then obviously it led to be true. I don't even know what to say. Uh, At the time, we were still losing games. Uh, four and seventeen says a lot when you think about a league record. Somehow, as the chart shows, we finished with a sixth seed. Out of eight, we lost the two teams, but I don't even know what to say. Well, I, I think I can preface this by saying when you took the job, Billy, and obviously you and I have known each other for 750 years, but <laughs> when you got the job, I remember sharing this sentiment with not only people on the Fairville Lakers, but just league-wide. Like, Billy's going to do a great job. Billy's the exact perfect hire for that job because, A, no one loves baseball more than Billy does. Uh, B, he knows how to kind of collect and organize and, and, and get guys motivated. And Vesley's that market where, and you guys can correct me if I'm wrong, but Vesley's that market where you got a different areas where you can draw from. But if all of a sudden you guys can put something together, People are going to rally around it and support it. I mean, I was. Hell, I went to your game against Lonsdale, for Christ's sake, to go to the state tournament. Well, yeah, I just wanted cheese curds at Lonsdale days. But that's beside the point. My, my, my main overriding point is you, you, we all knew you were going to do a good job. And I think, honestly, it was rewarding for all of us as a league to see you guys make the state tournament last year. At least that's the way I felt personally. I think I, I was cheering so hard for you guys. Now, granted... We all pooped the bed at the state tournament, but that's beside the point. It was just awesome to watch from afar. So seriously, congratulations, dude. It was awesome. Well, I appreciate you saying that again. And Chris, you were the first guy to call me after it was announced that I took over at Vesley. Uh, it meant a lot to me. Uh, I've been fortunate to learn under some great men yep. at St. Patrick and even before that. Uh, I went to Mankato, learned under Boyer, as you did. And, yep. uh, in Jackson, I had Scott Barr and Hall of Famer Tyrone Wacker and... In Eagle Lake, I met another guy that probably should be in the Hall of Fame. We retired his number, Kevin Geislinger. Uh, And then here, Monty and Johnny were the best. Uh, So I've been able to learn and absorb a lot of that. Now here, I work with Chris Hurtus. And honestly, I feel, and he would tell you no, I feel like we should put his number on the fence. For all he's done at Vesley, the 28 should hang on the fence, in my view. That's a personal thing. He says, no, we don't do that here, but... I could see us one day telling him, well, we're doing it. Tough ass. Yeah, exactly. We're doing it yeah, anyway. <laughs> well, as we, you know, close the chapter on 2023 and build off of it, what are your expectations with 2024? We'll get to the signee in a bit here, but sure. before that, you know, what are your expectations for this year as a manager of Vesley? The same. Uh, every team here will tell you that their goal is state tournament. If they don't, they're lying or 
they shouldn't be here. Awesome. It's the truth. You, you should be trying to go to state. We're trying to go. We're, we're not done. I don't feel like our story is complete. Uh, I would like to see 4-17 and 17 change to better. It has to. I, I don't see teams digging out of holes like that too often. There's a reason for that. Uh, but I, I know my team is young. Uh, if you look up and down the board, we have Perkinson, who's 34 now. Uh, Josh Simon's up there a little bit. But other than that, our next oldest guy is, what, 25? 26. That's Nate Simon, 25-6. Yeah. So, I mean, we're just young. We're going to take some lumps still. Uh, I feel like we were a little bit ahead of schedule for the plan that I laid out for myself. And it's fine to be ahead of schedule. Believe me, it was great. But I still want to build. I still think we can grow. I don't think we're done. We'll keep going. So one of the things I've always curious, and I'm probably going to ask a lot of the same teams, because, you know, it's you guys, New Prey, Union Hill. That you guys are all kind of drawn yeah. from some of the same pool, essentially. Are you seeing that there's still a lot of not only interest, but just because we all know baseball to a large degree is suffering because a lot of kids aren't playing or even interested in pursuing it outside of school ball is what I'm talking about. Sure. Are you seeing that it, it's still strong in that area? For the most part, it is. Uh, you still see great players coming out of high school. Uh, there's a sophomore in New Prague that's going to end up on varsity, whether he knows it or not, he, he will. Uh, he's practicing with them already. I coached him last year as freshman. He's solid. There's there's good kids. Uh, numbers are down in yeah. the youth. I know that, but I do feel like for the most part the kids that should be playing still are. Okay. I'm sure we lose athletes to lacrosse, and I'm sure we lose them to soccer, and that's going to happen. But or year round hockey or whatever. Yeah. yeah. At some point too, does do those sports lose athletes to us? Well, I think that'll come full circle a little bit too when somebody goes out for say hockey. And finds out he can't skate. Well, if you can't skate, let's put some cleats on you and find out right. what you can do on the dirt. Then. Right. So, I hope well, that answers that question. They yeah. stay up there. But uh, back to Vesley, one of the big signees that just had happened was uh, former St. Patrick player and uh, St. Cloud State pitcher Luke Tupi coming on board now this year. Obviously a big pickup, great pitcher for St. Patrick, great pitcher for the DRS when he was on different teams. But... What are your expectations for him, and how do you, you know, foresee him fitting in or not fitting in? Obviously, younger brother Ben on the team, but just uh, what are your expectations for him? Luke will come here. We'll make sure that he's rested and healthy before we get him back into throwing. He's going through a grind at St. Cloud. I know how that goes, and I know they're using the heck out of him. Uh, I know his pitch counts are fairly high on a regular basis. We'll get him back here. We'll rest him what he needs. If he needs a week or two, he does. I get it. Uh, I'm assuming we'll get him back in the middle of the end of May. He'll be back with us full-time sometime in June, and we'll just get him on a program. Uh, we'll keep him healthy. Uh, he doesn't as much good as he's going to do us in June and July. It's more important he's healthy in August. So I want him full and ready to go for playoffs, and, you know, that pushes rotation. <laughs> no, no offense to any of the guys on our roster, but a guy like that that's an All-American pushes everybody back a spot in the rotation. It's just, that's natural order. But that's the beauty of tone baseball. Everyone completely under, understands, yeah, okay, we're getting a guy like this. He's going to help us significantly. Correct. So I understand now what my role is, right? right? For sure. Yeah. But is Luke going to pitch nine innings every night? No, he's not. It's not how it works anymore. Right. Uh, th th things have changed from the time where we were kids and you threw <laughs> nine innings and yeah. the pitch count didn't matter as much. And, but as far as him fitting in with the team, he's local boy, brother on the team. It's weird seeing his dad and his uncle and not in green hats. I'll tell you the truth. When they come in Vesley hats, like, wow, that's, uh, that's strange. <laughs> and uh, I mean, Tom, Tom or Steve or one of the two or maybe both were president at St. Patrick at one point. So for them to come over and wear your hats is a little strange for me. But they'll fit right in. He's got friends on the team. Uh, he's just like one of us. But it's know. almost easier, too, when it's a sibling thing, just speaking from personal experience, because that's, again, one of the fabrics of town baseball is there's there's a connection of the family, whatever. It's almost easier then in that respect sure. to have guys hold each other accountable. Sure. Right? Like, yeah, you might be a, a great pitcher at a, a, a divi great Division two school. Your little brother's still going to call you out on your whatever. 100%. You know what I mean? Like, that's awesome. I think that's great. 100%. Yeah. And to have them both, and I hope they get in a little squabble. Oh, isn't that great? I, I want them to. It's part of, that'll make fun for guys like Jackson and Max on the end of the bench talking trash. <laughs> so good for those guys, right? 
Yeah. All right. Well, uh, one last question sure. here before we, you know, transition into our next manager. But DRS as a whole seemingly is getting more competitive year in and year out. Obviously, Vesley, 21 years since they last went to state. Webster was a long time before last year when they went. As the DRS continues to get more competitive, how do you see, you know, teams changing to adapt and adjust to that? Because all of a sudden it's not St. Patrick at the top anymore. It's Webster at the top, or they're expected to be. Faribault, Union Hill is always one of those top dogs, no pun intended, but just the, the transition and the almost flip of the league. Uh, well, look across the league and look at the top pitcher on every team. It starts there. You know, uh, not to pick on anybody, but the teams at the bottom, they don't have that guy throwing close to 90. Right. Uh, it's straight up, and it's mean to say, maybe. I don't know. I don't mean to hurt anybody's feelings, but look, look, look across even the game we won, and Lonsdale's going to fast forward through this whole segment because we picked on them a little bit because of that last game, but they were hurt too, and they had uh, Malika, and he didn't get to pitch. And is that a different story if he pitches? Maybe, maybe not. We'll never know. Right. But he tore up his knee in Shakopee. Uh, I mean, he, they have a top-end guy where they finish third in the league. So if you think about it, everybody's starting to find pitching. Uh, they've extended out. It's not just a new Prague-based core anymore in the DRS. That's changed. There's boys from all over the place. Uh, that's how it's changed is just guys from the area now, just, not just one town. And the general growth, I think, of town baseball just in general, where a lot of kids... 15 years ago didn't even know there was an opportunity to play at a Vesley no. or to play at a you know a Webster like wait they have a team like that's gone now right. because because of the popularity of the sport just in general so I think that that's helped all of us period and turn around and have a winning season find out what it does for your recruiting oh Webster wins goes to state wins what was it two or three games yep. they played Labor Day week they played Labor three, Day week I think they won three yeah. they were in the final eight yep. Well, all of a sudden now they've got more guys want to play at Webster, and now there's money infused, and they've got a scoreboard and a nice fence, and I'm yeah. hearing good things about irrigation maybe in lights over there soon. Maybe not this year, but think about what it does for us. Uh, go to state for the first time in 21 years, and now our fan base is alive again. 4-17 and 17 stinks, but <laughs> they sure showed out for the playoffs, right? They start playing good baseball down the stretch, and people show up. Uh, that's, that's where it is. All righty. Well, thank you very much, Bill. We appreciate it. That's uh, Vesley manager Bill Dunker taking part in the 2024 DRS Hot Stove Show. We'll be right back after the break with one more. Don't go anywhere. The 2024 DRS Hot Stove Show is sponsored by Innovative Graphics, your one-stop shop for all things that you need to get you and your team ready to look your best on and off the field this year. Welcome back to the 2024 DRS Hot Stove Show. We are joined by the St. Benedict Saints manager, Wade Olson. Wade, thank you for joining us. I appreciate you having me. This is always fun. Always a good time. A uh, little different this year. Let's start with the uh, 2023 season for you guys last year. A team that went to state when Faribault hosted, knocked them out, or not knocked them out, but went to state, right, that year? Uh, no, the year before. year before, my fault. Hosted, it's, okay. it's tough to, yeah. to separate all the time St. Benedict knocked us out of the playoffs, so I appreciate <laughs> you bringing that up. Yeah, well, it's, it's crazy because it's one of the teams that you don't really – think about going to state all the time but then you look at the amount of times that they do go to state and it surprised me because they can just go on any given day yep. they're they're that type of team so not to take it away from you but that speaks volume to the team that you have is they can surprise you and they can punch you right in the front of the mouth and we're here and we're ready to go yeah i mean that's kind of our mo it's our reputation we've uh, you know we're you know when when our vibe is good and our you know, we we can beat we think we can beat anybody and when our vibe isn't very good we are the worst team on the planet and uh, and uh, we are high highs and low lows at St Benedict and because of that actually sometimes it's really fun because you you know we've made the state tournament as an 11 seed and as a 10 seed and as a seven seed and, and things like that and those runs are magical and they're uh, you know those memories that uh, our players and um, you know and our fans uh, will will take with us forever uh that said we'd like to be more consistent we'd like to not have years like last year and not have years like when eric steinhoff came over so we've had a couple of you know twice in the last 10 years but we're really really bad and and, and one of those years was last year and we know that and we're going to try to do a better job this year but i will say this i mean i, I i've told you this both privately and, and publicly like you you guys have always been that team we're like ah oh, crap we got to play st benedict in region play because 
you guys just know how to play ball when it matters. You know, that's a, that's a yeah. testament to you guys. Yeah, and we're, and we're led by our leaders. Obviously, we've had great leadership. You know, they, whether it's the high camps or Scott Eichens or Chris Hartman or Tanner Oaks or yep. um, you know, we've just had really good baseball players from baseball families that. You know, when the when the game's on the line, and you know those those guys seem to come through more so than sure. so, than other guys. So, yep. uh, and the moment's not too big for us. We we know we're you know the lovable losers. If you you know if you were you know if you will. Um, so we don't really actually play with a lot of pressure. Our pitchers are able to play free. We're free up at the plate, and uh, and because of that, you know, when there's 250 people in the stands, it just doesn't affect us. Maybe like it does affect other. Uh, other teams and other players and and because of that we've been able to pull some upsets and make some nice runs as you guys transition from a year that was unfortunate last year into a brand new beginning here in 2024 how do you kind of renew or revive that vibe that you guys have of okay last year wasn't our year hey let's refocus hey let's get back to that easy going you know not so carefree but just more or less like we don't have that expectation of we're going to set the bar so high we can't attain it. Well, we have a track record of doing it. As number one is, uh, you know, when we've had bad years, bad playoff runs, we've come back the next year and have been a, a thorn or been a, a problem. Uh, at least so. The, the number one answer to that is we've done it before. We've um, we've been put in that position and we've come through time and time again. Can we do it this year? Um, you know. If our pitching stays healthy, and if we get consistency at the catcher spot, and if we, um, you know, if we get timely hits and the, and the vibe is good, we we just anticipate to be right there when it matters, you know. And, and our goal is really not to make the state tournament. We talk about just being in that scenario, being one game away, or being you know tied after six in a game to go to state, and then you know then you know we're going to lean on kind of our track record and our experience after that. So I have to be honest, you know, the first time I ever even knew that you guys existed was the state tournament in 2014, when the year before I had come back to play for or be a part of the Fairbowl Lakers. And I'll never forget this. I was talking to Hyde Camp in the press box who knew who I was, and he introduced himself, and we just got to chatting, and I said, where do you guys play? He said, oh, we're just done. And now I live three and a half miles from the ballpark. But my point is, what is it like? playing kind of in the shadow of, of, of the big monster being the Jordan Brewers. I mean, is that something that you guys even think about, or is that something that you guys even have to, to deal with at all? No, absolutely not. That, uh, you know, if any of that was happening, that was 15 years ago or so. Okay. We're, um, because you know, I, I will say this, I know you have a lot of guys that are from Jordan that maybe start playing with you guys and then or what or whatever. I know that there's some symmetry with that yeah, as well. Well, we what's nice is is we, we don't offer the same things. Um, you know, if you want to... You know, if you want to go play 38 games in your summer and you know, have, you know, play four games a week where you're trying to win the state tournament and stuff, well, that and play at a gorgeous ball field, well, sure. you know, you're you're gonna go to Jordan. And, and if you want to play 22 games and you want it to be a little bit lighter and you want the the vibe to be really good in the dugout between you know old guys and young guys and everybody and. And, uh, you know, we still play hard and we still care and our, you know, we still do some of those things, but it's just different. And there's a, um, you know, it's, it's a high character place being out at St. Benedict. It is. It's, a, yeah. you know, people that come watch this say, this is a great spot to watch a game. Umpires beg to umpire our, our games. They just sign up. The max you can get is four. They just, you know, they sign up for four Benedict games. We get basically the three same three umpires for all our home <laughs> games because they just, they love the the closeness that fans are behind the, you know, behind the umpire home plate. And it's just a different vibe. And you get a beautiful day out at St. Benedict. You know, you're, you're hearing cows and you're hearing, you know, you know, motorcycles speeding by, and you're just, it's just a, it's a different vibe, but it's a, it's a place of character. And uh, most people do say that about it, yeah. unless you have to take a, a ground ball in the infield or, or if I cut the grass, or if, you get too, if I cut the, the right field, yeah, or if I cut the grass <laughs> too thin and the ball ramps up on the center fielder, sorry, Arch, but, um, but uh, yeah, it's, we don't provide the same things that other places provide. And, and there is a place for St. Benedict because we do provide something different, a, a low um, leverage regular season where guys really treat each other well and it's really fun to play as well. Yeah. I like that because that we always talk and have talked about what you know kind of is town ball throughout this show and I think St. Benedict is the picturesque town ball field what represents it you know there's a lot of fields in southern Minnesota where it's 
you have your town ball field and it's surrounded by four cornfields. And then there's St. Benedict where there isn't a cornfield that surrounds it, but it still is the perfect town ball field because it basically is so much character. There's so much authenticity that just describes St. Benedict. I mean, I remember growing up playing there and it hasn't changed. You look at St. Patrick, it's changed for the better, but it's still St. Benedict true to its core top to bottom. I think that just is exactly what you want it to be, especially for the DRS. Yeah, we're proud of who we are. Um, we're proud of what, um, you know, of, you know, we were on the verge of folding, you know, 15 years ago or whatever it was. I mean, we were one body away from doing that. And, uh, you know, hadn't been to the state tournament in seven years. And then, you know, we end up going five times in nine years. And the, and we've had some really, really good crowds out there. People like coming when it's a nice day out to St. Benedict. So we, we, we're proud of the good things. Um, do we wish we would play a little better sometimes? <laughs> and, Who doesn't? Uh, and, and win a few more games? Yeah, we would. And we're going to try to do our best with that this year. Awesome. Uh one last question before we uh, close things out. DRS baseball has continuously gotten better throughout the last couple of years. We've seen a very much so of a flip of who's going to run the league versus who doesn't. In 2026, when New Prague hosts the you know state tournament, what are your expectations and what do you hope to see from the DRS league at that time? Well, the DRS, uh, I've said this every year for the last five years, it's... Uh, the best version of the DRS will be this year, and the best version that's ever been was last year. And the, you know, it just keeps getting better and better. And Agreed. and competition, and it's, you know, it's just like uh, any sport. You know, major college football. If Alabama's really good, then Georgia better catch up. You know, and and type of thing here where. You know, all of a sudden, Elko became really good, and then New Market became really good. So St. Patrick had to catch up, and Faribault had to catch up, and New Prague had to catch up, and nope. and it becomes an arms race. You know, it, it's really it's a, um, you know, guys are fighting for the, you know the same players, and it's a you know it's almost like free agency, almost you know, or uh, recruiting. I mean, more recruiting and free agency, where um, you know there's nobody wants to be. Uh, you know, nobody wants to be the four and twenty team when you know when the DRS is getting better. So people are fighting and scratching, and clawing to get better. And when everybody's fighting, scratching, and clawing to get better, um, then the league obviously is what it is now, which is the best it's ever been. Yeah. Heck of an answer. Uh, and I got to follow that up. Uh, how the Hubman football team? How are we going to look this fall? We're uh, <laughs> we're going to be all right. Uh, you know, it's uh, we're we're kind of in a spot right now. Is uh, we you know we you know if our Win total is six going into the year. We've been six. <laughs> if our win total is seven, we win seven. If our win total is five, we're not, we're not winning the games. We're not springing the upset right now. We're not. We don't have bad losses, but we don't have great wins, and we're just kind of winning the games we're supposed to, losing the games we're not. So, what we're trying to do is find a way to you know, take the uh, next step. Yeah, yeah, you know, to to go plus one on the win total or go plus two. So we got to find a way to uh, to overcome like the the Wasika really is the one that. That's awesome. for another season. Yeah. Another season. That has been manager of the St. Benedict Saints, Wade Olson, on a little St. Benny baseball and a little Jordan Hubman football. <laughs> in this we edition. had to mix it in. Had Sorry. to mix it in. Uh, this edition of the 2024 DRS Hot Stove Show. We got another one coming up after the break. The 2024 DRS Hot Stove Show is sponsored by The Double Wide, locally owned and operated, located at 421 St. Joseph Street, New Market. Welcome back to the 2024 DRS Hot Stove Show. We're joined by St. Patrick Irish manager Brent Garaki. Brent, how you doing on a fine April meeting tonight? Great. I'm doing fantastic. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Co-host joined by uh, Chris Reavers as well the third string first base coach for the Faribault Lakers. Coach, take me through uh, the 2023 season. Um, great year for you guys making it to the last weekend in terms of the state tournament at the Class B level, but just take us through, you know, anything and everything for the St. Patrick Irish. Jeez, that's a deep question. Um, anything and everything. I would say a lot of growing, a lot of growth, a lot of on the fly um, miscues, uh, some good cues. <laughs> um, it was it was a whirlwind, and the guys did a really good job of of putting day by or day to day operations at hand and and doing what they needed to do. As a fan, you know, obviously of amateur baseball and being involved in the league, um, I don't know how you felt about it, but I really liked 
them combining A and B for the state tournament. Just I thought the games were far more competitive. I thought the games were far more compelling. How do you think it was received, both you personally, as a guy that runs a Class B team, but also, like, do you think that this is this was good for amateur baseball? Um, I think it's a, I think it's a very, very deep question. I, I think it depends on who you ask. Sure. It, we, us personally, within the within the brand new B world, we don't play a lot of A teams. We don't play a lot of non league games, just for the mere fact that we getting guys to games, getting getting time on fields, that kind of stuff is hard and it's hard for every team. But coming to the state tournament, the one thing that we found compelling for our product at St. Patrick and I think a lot of the other B teams would say the same thing is they're like, holy cow, you guys brought a fan bus like that's incredible i think it was maybe and i don't want to speak out of turn but i think it was a little bit more eye-opening for the a teams to see what town ball means to a lot of the the b products that are out there and and I know they have fans that that are there and dedicated, and, but it's a different and animal. It, yeah. And it's yeah. it's just it's one of those things that um, I think they enjoyed it. I think we enjoyed seeing guys that we didn't go to battle with every day, and in the section um, in our in our league as far as the B side of things go and the DRS side. And we're not getting two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight looks at these at these teams. Uh, you know, they brought a different atmosphere to it. For sure. uh, good, bad, and different. It was it was fun. Yeah. It was it was fun for the guys. It was fun for the guys to be a part of something that isn't a norm. You know, I mean, you can go to the state tournament. And you play Union Hill twice, and then you play them in regions, and then you run into them in the state tournament. It's kind of refreshing to have different pitchers and not know exactly everything about the other people in the other dugout. What was your fan reaction from the move from C to B? I mean, I know it's probably a mixed bag, but... I know when we played you guys, for instance, your crowds were still great. I mean, you, you guys still travel really well, so I'm just wondering, like, how, do, how, how was the fan reaction to that? No, I think it was good. I, You know, St. Patrick is is it's a, a bar, a church, and a, and a ball field. Yeah. And um, our fans are dedicated fans. They And, you know, you have to add pieces to the puzzle of of the product and within that um there's there's some wondering of who this person is and where did they come from and and that type of thing but in the same realm they embraced them and it's what we try to make sure that we're recruiting that we're adding to the team that we're we're putting there that they fit too so talk about that new level of recruiting now that you're able to do in terms of class b obviously a lot different from class c but what's that been like so far in the off season it, so from from the past of of being in c i don't think it's much different other than you're looking at your salary cap a lot closer and you wonder where that falls and how is that going to render in the end and what are we looking at from from an aspect of 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 what we're what we're doing from a team aspect and if we have success if you have the affordability to give points to even just play game one in the state tournament two points is huge and we knew that going in Two years ago that if we made it 
we're making the jump. Yeah. And we accepted that as a program. We talked to the players. We talked to management. We talked to everybody else. And we wanted to make sure that everybody was on board with that. If we didn't, we had young talent that was going to play college baseball. And we were at a place where we had to cut players that were already one, two, three, four-year players for us and say, you're not welcome back if we wanted to stay and see. And that's something that we, sure. weren't, we weren't willing to do as a team. And I remember you know, when you guys, when we were hosting the state tournament being at Fairville um, with Dundas, and I'll never forget, I remember talking to somebody associated with the league and just saying, watching you guys, and I forget who you guys opened with because you won our region that year, and I forget who you guys opened with, but you won your game, and just saying how um, vibrant it was and how great it was for the league as a whole, the DRS League and our region and everything else. Just that, look at this, you know, uh, New Prague hosted it in 2018. We got the opportunity to host it in 2022. It's coming back to New Prague in 26. Shakopee's obviously been a staple, you know, with Class B and the state tournament. It's just awesome for our league to be so well represented, you know, and other teams to be coming down. You know, our championship game was Niswa and Buckman, but teams that have never had a chance to play at some of our ballparks. It's just awesome for our league, I think, personally. And it speaks to the depth and the and the and the statewide recognition for the DRS League as a whole. Yeah, I, you know, you look at the DRS, and and I think if you look at it from top to bottom, there's there's the ability of any team to win at any given point, and to um, th- there's not a day off. Right. Regardless of record, you can you can see it from different aspects, and one of the things that I tell our guys is, you know, they can look across the the diamond and say we're worse than they are, or we're possibly better than they are, and it's it's you got to roll the ball out and say play ball and and get it going. Yeah. So. I personally I there's nothing there's nothing ever that's a for sure. Yeah. So you you look at it and say we gotta we gotta come with something. Yeah. Uh last question before we wrap things up here for you. Two thousand twenty four season gonna be a grind for you guys. What is uh expectations for the Saint Patrick Irish? <laughs> um I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, you know we we were talking off the air about what gauntlets are and and well, your you section look at alone, my God, are a hundred percent right. <laughs> I mean, you have you have guys that have been here a lot longer than I have, and the battles that that have been laid are. It's tremendous, and how do you, how do you, uh, how do you describe what that looks like? You have Rochester State Champion, you have Elko, you have Newmarket, you have Dundas. Meesville, you have Dundas, you have Northfield, Northfield, you have Hampton, you have, and for for everything that is understood, we. So the end of our season last year, we had Hampton. I think we had two games with them at the backside of our of our schedule, and then we were set up with them going into our region in three. Our guys still talk about that Hampton series as being the absolute worst dogfight they've ever been in in their entire life, and. That's the whole thing, and you look at Hampton and the regular season. They ended up coming in in the A spot. We were the the one spot, and we had to match up with them in a best of five. And our guys are still tired from it. It it's that's what that region is, and to to have any success to win a game in something like that is 
it's not taken for granted for sure by well, any whole, by any means in that whole section i've i said this i'm like that whole section all those teams are state tournament teams in my opinion 100 yeah. percent. and and they would represent the state tournament in extreme high fashion for sure yep. and you know you 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 take everything that is given you smile and in high school baseball when somebody gives you a gift and you're the way team you tell all your kids take your cleats off put your tennis shoes on get on the bus don't say a word and do it as quickly as you can because (laughs) we just got something that that we probably shouldn't have and in in that league it's just it's a different it's a different animal and there's I, I with that with the DRS and and section uh, section one it, it's it's just that's what it is it, it's 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 not fun <laughs> but it is it it's you you have to Make sure your eyes are dotted and your T's are crossed. Okay, one last quick thing. I promise. I know we're running. Gotta be quick. Schedule. Okay, well I'll be quick. I promise. Why do we have to be quick? Um, it, it's radio time. You know how we have to be. describe for me and to the listener because I was there in person in I think the second row when you guys were still in Class C that Saturday of Labor Day weekend. Joey Grody on the mound. Those two dog fights that you guys were in. I'm sitting in the middle of the chirp fest between St. Patrick and Young America in one of the best town baseball games I've ever been a part of. The atmosphere, everything. How much fun was that to be a part of? The, um... Because you guys were runners-up that year, which was really cool. Right. Um, okay, so... You're a fair bolt guy, so I'll give you. I'll give. I'm gonna give you this. It was an extremely exciting game. The hard part for us is we had game one that day. We had a layoff, and then we had to get checked in again. Yep. Young America had the game just before us. We're that was our layoff, and then they played again. To get your guys back up and and doing the things that they need to be doing in a baseball way to be competitive shows not necessarily their baseball skill and their baseball want and their baseball piece, but heart, for sure, character. Yep. Um, Doing the things necessary, especially the small things, to create the possibility of of being on the better side or the one run more. There's that, which was 2020. 2020, which was COVID year, we lost, um, we lost, uh, oh gosh, um, I'm going to lose his name now, the president um, of the NBA. Oh, uh, uh, Freddie Roofs. Freddie Roofs. Okay. Um, so I'll tell you this. 21. <laughs> My bad. In Chaska, <laughs> when we had to face off with them again, and we had just lost uh, John Brymhorst, yep. and we went through that and being Jordan people ourselves and supporting our teams. But so there was that surrounding piece. But then there was fans at that game yep. that had to sit on the dikes out in the outfield. There was nowhere to sit. There yep. was nowhere yep. to sit to yep. see the game. It was awesome. And for our guys to come from behind, I think it was it was five I think Young America was up on us five uh, five zero or five one and for our guys to fight and claw through that knowing the atmosphere that was already set the year before and the fan creation that it was chaska was yankee stadium it was awesome and it was it was 
Of the two games, the one that I remember the most is 21. That's awesome. Was that where Chaska looked at it and they're like, we don't know where to put people. Like, we honestly, (laughs) they paid, but we have no place to put them. For both fan bases, I think, um, was absolutely an electric. It was a championship of championships and... Obviously, we had the hangover. We ended up uh, getting beat by a really good um, Watkins. Watkins team. Um, but Joey brought us from... He closed the game before in 20. And I'm sorry, I'm going back and forth. But I, I'm, giving, I'm, giving, I'm giving due credit because I love Joey. Joey knows that. And I'm going to buy him a house within our radius so he can play for us at some point. I, I know it won't. I know it won't. But I would literally, I would literally do anything. I would do anything for a lot of players. But Joey's different. He's the best. He, to have a kid that pours his heart into the closing game and then completes that game in 20 against Young America and can't come out of the dugout because he's crying so hard that's 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 different that only happens in town ball and that's that's him perfectly stated he's the best he's when Webster says ball player in the dictionary, this yeah. picture will be there. Yeah. And we have, you know, the fun part is, is every team we have a lot of them. We have a lot of our guys that are that are those dudes. We had a lot of, our entire team had to come back from that rest. It's awesome. And we, uh, you, you give it to them, you know, as a non-player, as a guy that sits on the sideline, you, you sit and you you try that will do it for our uh st patrick irish segment brent groggy thank you for closing it out plenty of good stories there but that will do it for this part of the segment we will have another one after the break the 2024 drs hot stove show is sponsored by innovative graphics your one-stop shop for all things that you need to get you and your team ready to look your best on and off the field this year welcome back to another segment of the 2024 drs hot stove show this time joined by lonsdale manager phil tisdale phil welcome aboard and uh, we appreciate you having on oh thanks for having me another year um last year not the year you wanted it to end and i probably just get it out of the way right away but losing into Vesley to go to state overall the 2023 season for the Lonsdale Aces pretty good finished in the top three of the league what were uh your thoughts and basically a recap from the manager's point of view for you uh top three finish is where we kind of expected we should be finishing and uh not the ending we wanted uh, especially with two chances to have a chance at state. I mean, we lost to Union Hill, and then we ended up losing to Vesley too. Um, Vesley got on a hot streak there, which was good for them to see, but uh, not good for us. We had it sucks having two chances and not getting neither one of them. One of the uh, things that we have talked about, you know, off the record is heck of a ball player in Joey Malico getting injured in the game before but uh just take us through you know as a manager how do you kind of rally around that well yeah an injury is an injury you gotta deal with what comes and but uh you know athlete like that that he is um you kind of just have to pull the team together and say hey whatever let's we gotta pick up those pieces and go with it and see where it goes one of the things i'm always interested to ask um, a lot of these guys is you know outside of you know us being in fairable we kind of have our own little area but for you guys in lonsdale uh, the proximity for which you guys can draw you know where are you seeing a lot of your guys that are that, that the interest from in the pool outside of the high school in, in, in general because i know you and montgomery are obviously not competing but you guys are kind of going after some of the same kids but you know, where are you guys normally um, fixated on as far as your player retention and things like that? Uh, we had a big group back in the day that uh, was a big TCU group that all played together as 
you know, all through high school, all through kid, that um, that we had gotten to play that are now our, you know, our leaders that, uh, and now we're looking to add more, you know, whether that's, you know, we've got a few from Northfield um, to help us out. And, you know, there's some more from TCU that we're trying to get to, you know, build that bottom again and start all over. Um, but yeah, either way, I mean, there's groups from both sides that we can get and getting them to mesh together is, you know, a fun part because they're learning, meeting new people, new teammates, playing together, and they're sure. having fun with it. And I got to say, Joan, now that I'm a Jordan guy, but just even calling it TCU is still weird for me because I still call it Montgomery Lonsdale <laughs> yeah. High School. So yeah. I'm sure you get some of that to it from oh, time absolutely. to time. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Into the 2024 season, you know, what are the expectations? Talk about some of the guys that you're going to lean on, some of the guys that may have departed from the team, but more or less just give us a little uh, sneak peek preview of the uh, Lonsdale Aces. Um, yeah, we should uh, have quite a few of our guys back. Uh, we did lose two guys uh, as of now. Uh, Devin Wilsapka and Connor Crabtree, who were big parts of our everyday lineup. Uh, we have a few high school kids coming. That's about all we're adding. But I still feel that with what we have on our lineup, that we will still be able to make that top three again and uh, perform like we did last year. Some new guys will pick up new positions, and they should be able to run with them. One of the questions that we've talked to a lot of people about last year and one of the, I don't want to say character traits, but definitely can see it with some of your players is, we do like getting that rivalry feeling across the board in the DRS just because it makes baseball so much more competitive. Do you like when it gets to the point where people are jawing at each other, but it's in a respectful way, or would you rather have people be more of that old school and kind of, hey, we're here to play a baseball game. Let's not, you know, go down that road. Well, there's kind of a both when you got a rivalry. I mean, you got teams that will – you know, you can be mad at each other on the field and hate each other, but as soon as you get off the field, it's let's go get a bush Who's light. Who's buying the bush light? Let, right. Let's get a beer. I mean, <laughs> yeah, there's rivalry, there's jaw jack, and there's, you know, smart talking. But, yeah, it's all got to be in good respects and whatnot. But, yeah, after it's always, hey, you need a beer, we'll get you a beer. How about that? You know, they're all right. We'll talk about it after the game. No, it's fun. It's, it's great having rivalries. It's, it's a good time. Well, I was going to say, too, just to kind of piggyback on that, there was never more evident than when, you know, we were hosting the state tournament back in 2022 with Dundas, and when Montgomery was playing, I think, you know, obviously Montgomery had a massive following that came to their game, but there was a lot of Lonsdale shirts in that crowd as well that were that were coming to watch that game, which I thought was really cool. Oh, absolutely. We may, you know, have big rivalries with other teams and, you know, we, but there's, you're still going to go watch a team play. For sure. Uh, I mean, you still got buddies on the team playing for different teams, and so you, you're still going to go watch and cheer them on because that's just what you do. That's baseball. Yep. As you guys kind of, you know, I, I want to say this is 100% true, and Chris, you might have to back me on this, but it's been now – minus shock be the longest since someone's been to the state tournament is Lonsdale what was you know the message when you guys were talking at the end of that game last year of like hey we were right there you know that should be us celebrating we can be that team you know is that the same message you're going to send to them this year oh absolutely because it's been more than just last year we've been on that fence of going for the last four or five years and yeah you talk about getting close to that game, getting there, and it's like, hey guys, we gotta. It's it's time to go one of these times here. We gotta get to that point where guys understand, like, hey, it's it, let's go there. Let's let's be that team. Let's be one of those teams that compete in the state tournament. So, yeah, I I think they uh, they got that hunger for getting there, and I'm sure hoping that's this year. And I always have said too, like you know the. the the level of competition rising is good for the league, you know, as a, as a whole. I mean, in all honesty, I think that, like, you know, with Webster being ineligible last year and Par Lake being ineligible last year, it created an opportunity, obviously, for other teams to be able to, to, to make that run. But at the same time, when you go into a, a Friday night game in Lonsdale 
you know, you're kind of, your juices get flowing a little bit because you know, at least from, from, from a fairable standpoint, we know like we're going to get their best shot. So we got to bring it, you know, and same thing. I'm sure when you guys come to Bell Field on a Friday night, right. you know, well, we got to bring it, you know, because it's just, it's, you know, the, the work week is done. Now it's time to, to, to play some ball. I just think, you know, I've, I've said this repeatedly throughout the show, but you know, the health of the DRS is always going to be to a point where I will take our league top to bottom against any other league in the entire state. And that's, and that's akin to what you were just saying about how, Hey, you know what? It's a matchup thing in the regions. And also it's kind of fun to watch uh, how you guys stack up based upon who's throwing that day or who isn't throwing that day for a region game or whatever, but it speaks to the depth of our league. That's for sure. I answered his, I answered my own question. That's how long I talk, Jackson. I'm sorry. It's normal. So uh, <laughs> I guess one last question to speak to what Chris kind of talked about there was. You mean the question Chris asked and then yeah, answered himself? Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, like, hey, go ahead. let's talk about the DRS as a whole as it continues to gain that competitive nature, building off of what it already is been competitive. How do you maintain that level of, uh, level of competition and get to that state tournament and break that ice? Well, I think it's got to be players' hunger to play, players' hunger to win. I mean, if you're not hungry to win and want to be at that next level, well, somebody else is going to take your spot. Um, Our team is competitive. They all want to be there. It's just we've got to pull them little things together and finish a game and win the game to get there. And for uh, people who are going to tune into the Lonsdale Aces game, you know, via – Watching it or tuning in on K Check later this summer, uh, what can they expect to see? Well, you can see uh, you're gonna see a lot out of our now guys that are our leaders like Ross Beamer and Ike Pint, um, Jack Skazachik, Marty Kalina. I mean, those guys are gonna come. They're gonna play every day. They're gonna they're gonna be your guys to lean on. They're ones that are gonna expect to have that good bat and that great catch or striking out you know they're gonna they're gonna be the ones we rely on and everyone's gonna you know push them to be stronger and i was gonna ask you what year is this for you with lonsdale no, i gotta see because i gotta keep a barometer of who i still have a, don't go too long in, though because sometimes we get to this last question that <laughs> i want to keep talking and then we just keep going so <laughs> Nothing too long here. Nah, I think this is my, well, two in St. Patrick, so it would be about 16. Wow, okay. I knew it was a few. I was just curious. Yeah. So it's 16 years for you in Lonsdale. Yeah, 16 in Congrats, Lonsdale. man. Seriously. Thank you. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. That's good. Anything else you want to toss in there or uh, cover the bases for you? No, I think that's it. We, uh... I'm looking forward to the year. Appreciate you guys doing this and uh, go Aces. Well, I was going to say, you guys have a great vibe, a great atmosphere, and honestly, like there's there's not really, in terms of atmosphere, this is where he gets going on right Friday here, nights, so. it's it's an awesome place to go watch a ball game yeah. at the Lonsdale Park. Seriously. Fun Grew place. up doing it. So. That's right. All righty. Thank you very much, Phil. We appreciate you coming on. That'll be the Lonsdale Aces edition of the 2024 DRS Hot Stove Show. Stay tuned. We got another one after the break. The 2024 DRS Hot Stove Show is sponsored by The Double Wide, locally owned and operated, located at 421 St. Joseph Street, New Market. Welcome back to another 2024 DRS Hot Stove Show segment, this time joined by New Market Muskies manager Todd Bergstrom. Todd, thank you for joining us. How are you doing tonight? Great. Thanks for having me. So last year, a bit of an unfortunate ending in the 1B best of five series to Dundas. Give us a little recap of New Market Muskie Baseball last year. Obviously, Section 1B, a grind, but an unfortunate end to your uh, season. Yeah, it's, well, Section 1B, as everybody knows, is probably the toughest one in the state. No doubt. Um I don't know. We we just didn't play our kind of game where we were just too eager to swing at pitches instead of taking them into deeper counts. And I think we did have the better team, but they scored more runs in the final game than we did. So, yeah. but I don't know. I think we got a really good nucleus if we get them all back. So. Talk about some of those guys. You know, you mentioned the word nucleus. How is that nucleus looking for the 2024 season? 
Um, I really don't have a good grip on it right now because so many of the college kids are going to go play Northwoods, so that's going to hurt. But I am bringing in like four high school kids that are probably just better than most high school kids. Um, but I, yeah, if, if I get some of them guys back, we're going to be pretty good. But like, we'll still have Tony Bach, uh, Andy Hinkemeyer. I mean, we'll have them guys. Uh, so we'll still be pretty good. Brett Herbert's coming back. Uh, I mean, we'll be all right, I think. So I asked um, Brent Grocky from St. Patrick. I don't know if you guys have met, um, but I asked him this question earlier during his segment, uh, and he gave us a 19-minute answer. But I'll ask you the same thing. The merger with A and B at the state tournament, because you and I ran into each other at a couple of state tournament games. I think personally, from you know the 30,000-foot view of it, I think it's really good for amateur baseball because I'll, I'll be frank, there is no vibe with Class A ball. The talent's really good. Teams are pretty damn good. There's just no vibe. So I think having those teams getting kind of a taste of what town baseball really is, I think it's as good for the product as a whole. It is really good baseball. I, I will give you that. The only thing is, oh, it's like with the state board, it's a money thing. And those eight teams weren't bringing any fans. Sure. Kinda, you sure. know what I mean? Yep. So, like, you, if you were at a St. Patrick game last year, they probably had three to one in fans. No doubt. You know, yep. and I don't know. I guess I'm still a little bitter about that A because like two years ago, the state board didn't have one player signed or released in Class A. It's like, well, then who's keeping tabs on them? You know, where last year in B, you had Victoria got knocked out there when they right. made the tournament. And I then don't somebody know. got a buy, basically, right yeah. out of the shoot. See, Minnetonka, I think, yep. did, yeah. yeah. And I, I think that's unfortunate, you know, but if as long as they're going to keep it up with everybody, then, yeah. Level playing field. Yep, yep. Then let's have that or do it, so. Do you think that changes your perspective or outlook when you're approaching the playoffs or as you want to maybe – get a better grip of who you're going to be playing in the regular season heading into playoffs or is this something that doesn't necessarily affect you that much? I don't know that it really affects you because honestly how much did St. Patrick know about Minnetonka when they played them or vice right. versa right. you know um, and St. Patrick stepped up big with Ryan Free just carried him there at the end and you know he wasn't like their horse all year you know and at the end he was their horse yeah. you know so I, yeah I don't know that it really matters if you play them during the year or not, the eight teams. And if you play them in the state tournament, they know as little about you as, you know. So let me ask you, because I asked Brent the same thing about the adjustment. I know it's been a couple of years for you guys from the jump from Class C to Class B. And I know you guys were one of the teams, and I'm speaking for you. You can correct me if I'm wrong, but you guys were one of the teams that was a little more outspoken about getting bumped up to Class B. But I also know that when you guys did make the switch, you know, I think your fan base responded. I think you you guys always draw really well. You guys always travel really well. Um, what was that adjustment like? Well, yeah, our fans are unbelievable. I mean, I, we got a phone call the other day like, hey, where's your schedule? Because they want to plan their vacations around it, you know. So You're kidding me. No. That's so, awesome. It, that's what I say, you know. And <laughs> just here in town, the support is unbelievable. And our fans... Some of them, you know, they get a little gripey when a call don't go Newmarket's way, and which you don't. Who say, doesn't? Who doesn't? Do I that? mean, it's like sometimes I wish the fans would just back off that part and you know cheer the other team on and cheer your team on, you know. Um, but yeah, our fan base is great. You know, I don't know. That's cool. And yeah, they support us. You know, whether we're C, they supported us. B, I know. That one year in B, we made it to the Final Four and right. we had plenty of fans. In fact, so. wasn't it, what year was it where you guys led, was it that year where you guys had the most hits of any team in the state tournament, both both classes? Was it that year? Because oh. I remember watching you guys play a game in Hamburg, and I think you play, you ended up losing to Rochester, who ended up winning it, if I'm not mistaken. No, we, uh, I think we played like... Oh, but in any event, I know you guys yeah, had a ton of hits. But yeah, our first couple games, I think we won like 
thirteen to something and yeah. like eleven to something and yeah, our first run at B, you know. That's cool. So yeah. As you guys, you know, continue this class B I don't wanna call it a run, but tenure and you lose a tough game to Dundas in five how do you kind of respond to that for your 2024 season and be like, okay, we know we were the better team. We know the mistakes we made throughout the year. How do we prepare ourselves, you know, quote unquote, better for when that moment comes? Well, it, I guess you could say some of that was on me because like we knew going into that fifth game that they had one guy left. And if we don't swing at any first pitches, that's 27 pitches they've thrown and then they're throwing 54, we could have ran up his count instead of swinging at the first pitches, and then they really had nothing after that guy. So that was more on me telling our guys, hey, quit swinging, you know? Uh, Battle deep into the count when you can, you know? Instead, we were up there hacking at first pitches, making first pitch outs, and that's just, you can't do that, you know? Right. Especially in a five-game series, you know? When they don't have that much pitching and, you know. Are you someone that's in favor of, because we were just talking about, you know, your entire section, I think, are all state tournament teams. I mean, you guys are that good. Are you in favor of expanding the Class B format? I. Or do you think it's the right number? It's good right now. I mean, Because even those section matchups are damn near state tournament games. Cause oh, the, yeah. When you, t- you go play in Meesville and Rochester, I mean. Hampton is a really good ball team. Whether I know they didn't make it last year, but you watch out for them this year. Uh, Elko's good all the time. You right. know, look at their hitters. I mean, you right. don't want to face them guys. Uh, St. Patrick's a great team. I mean, that section over there, that's fun to go play. You know, you don't want to drive to Rochester, of course, but sure. Yeah, but it's fun to play them. You know. Yeah. On the opposite side of that, focusing in on the DRS. It's a little different this year, obviously. What are your thoughts on the way that, you know, the DRS has handled that relationship with Class B and Class C? I think it stinks, to be honest with you, just because, all right, now they've set my exhibition schedule, basically, because now the games don't count. And maybe we could have been going to play, like, Chaska or Victoria or somebody else like that. If for the, a litmus test to see where you yeah, stack up. For instead... Sure. Now we're going to go play these 10 games or 11 games that, I don't know. I mean, we need to be a part of the DRS, and I think the DRS needs us to be a part of it. 100%. And with Elko and with St. Patrick. I mean, Newmarket was one of the first teams, you know. But, yeah, they, we got to get back to where them games count. And, you know, I, I just... I don't think they should be exhibition games. That's my opinion. Wholeheartedly agree with you because, I mean, there's there's games where, you know, you look at Webster or we, like Vesley, for example, we always play St. Patrick really well for whatever reason. They're a great team at Class B, but it can be a game where it's a one-run game or a two-run game, and those types of games, like, now they don't necessarily mean as much because of that situation. You know, your closing thoughts here on what the DRS hopefully can do in years to come. Well, I, if they make them count, some teams go into it with the strategy, well, I'm going to throw my third pitcher because we're playing Newmarket or we're playing St. Patrick Elko. I, when you're doing that as a coach, this is my opinion. You're telling your guys, we don't have a chance. If you're a coach, you should never tell your kids you don't have a chance. Right. Right? right. I mean, that's just, to me, that's crazy. You should go into every game trying to win every game, and it's going to make you better at the back end. And I'm also, I'm going to piggyback on what you just said, Todd, because I'm also a fan of, and, and I was very outspoken at the meeting the last time saying these games should count and here is why. Because the way that when we're trying to secure, and this is from a Class C standpoint, when we're trying to re-secure that fourth bid, they take into account, well, they got three pretty damn good B teams in that league. So they've had that, again, that litmus test of how do they stack up against a St. Patrick, a Newmark, yeah. and an Elko. Okay, well, a Faribault and a, and, and, a, and a Vesley or whoever is going to represent us, yeah, they should get that fourth team because we're we're a better league as a whole and as a product 
when we're tested to mm -hmm. to, to its best. Um, sorry. No, I, so I'm, I'm as outspoken as you are about that. Yeah, and I agree with you that it just makes our league look better. For sure. That's and yeah, we we need to get that fourth team back, but I don't know how we're going to do it. Right. So, anything else you'd like to add in there? No, just it's getting closer to baseball season. And oh, he would like to say that on Fan Appreciation Day, he's buying the first beer for everyone that comes up and says Todd at the Newmarket Field. Is that right? <laughs> Is that what you're saying? I don't know where you heard that. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Well, yeah. that has been the New Market Muskies manager, Todd Birdstrom, joining us for the 2024 DRS Hot Stove Show. Don't go anywhere. we got another one after the break. The 2024 DRS Hot Stove Show is sponsored by Innovative Graphics, your one-stop shop for all things that you need to get you and your team ready to look your best on and off the field this year. Welcome back to the 2024 DRS Hot Stove Show. I'm Jackson Jurek, joined by Terry Fredrickson, the manager of the Elko Express, the Class B team, one of three Class B teams in the DRS. Terry, how are you doing today? Doing good. Thanks. Good, 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 good. Take us through, you know, your 2023 season and just a little short recap about it. Well, we had a good year. I mean, we were, were not a typical year, but we were down a little bit in pitching. And at the end, we got a little hot. And of course, we had to play Meesville at the end. So I uh, took them to the fifth game, and we're leading in that fifth game. And then uh, they're tough. They're, they're tough to beat. So uh, they're a different team at the end of the year. And, uh, yeah, it was just fun to compete with them. Do you think that when that – class b best of five series especially in your league is i don't want to say quote unquote you know every team could make the state tournament make a run in the state tournament but it seems that that's the argument across the board especially for you guys and other teams a part of it well they gave us another team this year so we've only got eight in our section and we're just sending five to the state tournament so that's pretty good the way it is now, that, of course, with adding all those teams, you know, all the Class A and the Class B merging, there's a lot of teams. There's a lot of good teams out of A. So I feel happy about what we're doing, you know. And uh, although we, we, we ended up with Meadsville, we had a good chance to go and, you know, just our fault we didn't beat them last year. Talk about that Class A and Class B merger. One of the big reasons that I don't want to say the success was there in the state tournament was the fan bases that B brought. What's your opinion on that Class B and Class A merger? Uh, well, I would have voted against it. They never let us vote on it. I don't think any of our Class B teams would have voted in favor of having us put together with the A teams. And not that there ain't A teams. We play a lot of A teams out here in Elko. There, there's a lot of teams that come out, and they're, they're great guys, but there's a lot of teams that aren't very good there. Some of those teams should be playing C ball. It's not really fair what they're doing now. So hopefully when they do the new three class tier, they can get some of those teams that aren't very good, you know, build them up, and then they can, they can become a you know, B or an A team again. Talk about the DRS and the Class B and Class C games that aren't going to matter this year, almost like an exhibition. How do you feel about that? Because some of the other guys and managers felt like, well, there goes our exhibition games throughout the year because now that these don't matter, there isn't really a point for us to play them. Well, I mean, you got to play games. And right now there, there's not enough teams that want to play. None of the C teams want to play the B teams. Especially when they come out with rankings weekly, it's like, oh, my rankings might go down because I lost to a B team, which all those guys that are ranking, they, they understand that type of stuff. But uh, right now, we don't have enough teams to play. We like to play more games, and right now we can't even do that because uh, there's no C team that will even schedule us other than the DRS that are mandatory to even schedule us. Talk about the DRS as a whole. It's been seen that over the last couple of years, the competition has really increased, even with the C teams. What's your take on that? Well, like you see it today, you get uh, St. Patrick's best pitcher going to Vesley, you know, so a lot of guys don't want to play B uh, altogether. I don't quite understand some of that stuff, but uh, yeah, yeah, a lot of the teams are going down just to the C teams, and, uh, you know, those C teams, they're going to be B teams pretty soon. You know, that's just the way it is, but it's, it's good to see everybody get better. You go to the park and everybody competes. As you transition as we transition back into Elko baseball what uh, what can we expect from the Elko Express in 2024 well we're gonna have better pitching um bottom line better pitching I mean Jake Patrika who wouldn't want him on your team you know he's been saying for years he's coming here and he had to go back and uh he promised Faribault he would be there and uh he did go back and play one year and, and his plan was always to come to Elko after that year so 
Jake Patrika, we got Kyle Norby coming back. He moved to Colorado. He'll be back this year. So we're going to have one or two uh, pretty nice staff compared to the, the guys that we had last year, too. So our pitching will be better. Dylan Thomas is gone. Of course, he's been our, our spark plug for many, many years. So uh, we'll, he, he, that'll hurt not having Dylan on our roster. No doubt about that. What about a couple of the younger guys that are coming up on this team? Anybody else that we should look out for? Uh, that's yet to be determined. I guess the young guys, are, you know, they're, they work hard. We got some high school kids coming, some guys from... Uh, Lakeville South, we got their second base, but we got some guys from Farmington coming. So uh, once they get done and back into school and complete, be here full time, it'll, it'll make a difference. We'll have some speed and guys that can uh, can punch the ball around. Talk about a little bit about the history that you've had here with the Express and just kind of heading into another year. What's it like knowing that? You know, Terry Fredrickson, it's a name that everybody knows across the board. What does that mean to you? Well, I never meant it to be like that. I never meant here to be the, you know, this many years. So it's, uh, it's, it's kind of different. Uh, I, don't like, I don't like the press and all that stuff, you know, when people come on. We have Fox 9 Town Ball Tour. And, of course, the first thing they want to do is come out and do an interview. I, I just do not do that stuff anymore. And, uh, I mean, it's cool. Don't get me wrong. It, it's cool. Uh, I'm ready to get out of it. So I'm looking for somebody to actually, actually take it over. So, uh, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, I'm getting older and the kids are getting younger and it's just not, doesn't feel the same anymore. Is that a little foreshadowing for you? Is that could be this potential last year? Are you looking at maybe waiting until that new Prague Shock be a state tournament in 2026? Uh, that, that, that doesn't matter to me when I'm out. I mean, it's just if the right guy comes around. Um, Mike Christensen is back coaching with me this year. He took a couple years off. Ross Bastier is going to come and be our third base coach. He's been in Hampton the last couple of years. He's going to come back and coach with Elko. So... Uh, get some young guys in, that are uh, interested, and maybe Ross, maybe he's our guy. Maybe he's uh, the guy now? Yeah, maybe he's the guy. We'll see how, how, much, uh, how much time he's got for stuff like that. be good to have some young guys back in there. Awesome. If you had to uh, give a brief one- to two-sentence explanation about what the rest of the state could expect from the Elko Express this year in terms of baseball, camaraderie, you know, who are they going to see when they take the field against them and who are the fans going to see when they come to watch the play? Well, you're going to see a good mixture of veterans and young kids playing together. Uh, I expected them the year to actually get back to the state tournament. We haven't been there for a couple of years. I expect to be back there with our pitching this year, hopefully, and we just we need to stay healthy. And uh, the guys really get along. That's the main thing on our team. They all get along. So some of the young guys are gone, moved to other teams and back and forth. A lot of guys want to play with their friends. So if we get that ni nice mixture of the younger guys the, and the older guys, uh, I think, think things are going to come together real good for Elko this year. Awesome. Anything else you want to toss in there? Are you all set? No, I'm set, yeah, just ready to get out of the field. The guys are out putting all the, uh, the netting and everything up today, and we had all three, we have three teams in Elko that are you know, our 35 and our 15 older teams. So we all got together and, you know, Get the field ready to go today. Enjoy the nice weather, that's for sure. I mean, it's a lot different from last year. Last year was 30 mile an hour winds and 30 degree weather. This year it's uh, 80 degrees, bright and sunny, and a nice cool breeze. A lot of different and uh, definitely makes it exciting for baseball season right around the corner. Yeah, ready to get going. Nobody right. wants to practice. Everyone wants to get in the field and end it. So practices are not much fun for anybody. That's right. All right. Well, that will do it for this uh, segment of the 2024 DRS Hot Stove Show. That's been Class B Elko Express Manager Terry Fredrickson joining us. Terry, thank you very much. We appreciate it. Good luck this year. We wish you the best and uh, can't wait to see what the Elko Express have to offer this year. All right. Thanks for coming out. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. The 2024 DRS Hot Stove Show is sponsored by The Double Wide, locally owned and operated, located at 421 St. Joseph Street, Newmarket. Welcome back to the final segment of the 2024 DRS Hot Stove Show. We are joined on the phone by Ben Friedenberg, the manager for the Shakopee Coyotes. Ben, how are you doing today? I'm doing pretty good. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Ben, take us through a little bit of the last year with the Shakopee Coyotes. Um, a crazy win against New Prague in the playoffs. Obviously not the uh, regular season that you guys had wanted. Started off on the right foot by uh, beating the Vesley Warriors 12-0, but just kind of take us through that first game all the way down to the last. Yeah, it was my first year stepping in as a manager, so it was a lot of ebbs and flows, learning the process, and you know, definitely an adjustment period. We started off really good with 
12 0 win to a team that ended up going to state. So that felt really good. Um, yeah, it was, I mean, I knew most of the players from playing with them for the last couple of years, but figuring out the new role that I was in and figuring out what was best for a team for, you know, adjusting and in game things. So we had a good start and it kind of was up and down throughout the year, had a couple wins in there and get to get to playoffs and had that big upset over new Prague. So that felt good and got the guys fired up and unfortunately had to end after that, but we felt like it was a successful year. One of the big, uh, I don't want to say issues that we've seen in the past, but kind of the knack on the shock to be Coyotes is the numbers game that they always have to play seemingly throughout the courses of the years. You guys seem to have your numbers very much there. I know in that first playoff game against Faribault, you had them on the rope in the beginning, but just kind of take us through the number game that the shock to Coyotes have faced last year and hopefully into this year. Yeah, it's you know something that we've dealt with and, you know, I'm going to have to continue dealing with. But even that first game, I was talking to Charlie before the game down in Fairbolt and talked to him after. And he was, you know, pleasantly surprised of kind of that effort that we put in. And Coyotes have always been a playoff team. It's no one can ever explain it. Just something that happens. And, you know, it's good to see the guys respond to the way that they did and, you know, putting up that effort that do or die because, you know, a season's going to be over. And we gave them a run for their money. And then, battles on a new Prague and you know we gave them a run for their money too but we took theirs so as the DRS continues to get more competitive you know it seemingly is who is going to be the top team what are your thoughts so far from what you've seen from last year and into this year with the DRS as a whole and gaining competitiveness oh it's great to see and there's any given night any team can win that's why it's such a good league and there are very, a lot of very good competitive teams in our division. Union Hill is always up there. New Prague, Fairbolt. I mean, the list goes on. But one of the sleeper teams that I keep my eye out for is Webster. I mean, they just, they got a young nucleus there and a bunch of good guys in their team. And, you know, they got that spark in them. So I, I can see them finishing at the top this year, but you never know. Let's talk a little bit about that Webster team last year. They did go 18-3 and overall, but were disqualified from the playoffs. Give us a little bit of your opinion on how the board handled that situation. And if you don't know about it, I can definitely uh, lead you into it. But just uh, your overall thoughts. Oh, I'm, I'm well aware of that very unfortunate situation. And that's, we have our own situation where we can only sign people from Shakopee and we have our own restrictions. So... We have our very strong opinions, and it's, you know, it's, it's sad to see, to be honest with you. This isn't the minor leagues. This is town ball baseball. It's very competitive. There's a lot of people that invest a lot of time into this, and it's such a fun, great league. And just to see that very unfortunate circumstance just derail that team season, it's, to me, it was unnecessary. Much of the people said the same things over the course of the interviews, and obviously people listening will pay attention to that. But as you know, you watch that Webster team, do you think that makes them more dangerous this year and doesn't even put just the league on notice, but the state as a whole? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, that's, I mean, it's, it's lighting a fire that was already, it's pouring gas in the fire that was already lit. You know, it's, I mean, <laughs> to the rest of our teams, like they're going to be coming with a vengeance and we're not the ones who caused the problem. So, yeah, well, they're going to put some teams on notice out there. They're, they're a very good team. Kind of transitioning a little bit here, this year for the DRS, the Class B and Class C matchups within the DRS no longer count towards the standings. What's your take on that as a manager and then basically just uh, – take a step back in your opinion on that as a DRS fan? Uh, to me, it's, that's fine. You know, it is what it is. It's, there's obviously the gap between the, the player's skill gap in there. And it's, you know, I, to some teams that if you are very close in a playoff race, one win or one loss against a team that is in a whole different ranking, you know, could make or break the season. It could, differ between you having home field advantage in the playoffs or not. And that's, so I, I get that side of it, but for the coyotes, when we're in an adjustment year, it's not that big of a difference for us. So we just kind of sit back and smile at it. 
Let's talk about the Coyotes for the 2024 upcoming season. A couple of new faces I saw on the list at the NBA website. Take us through a couple of those players and what you can expect to see from the Coyotes this year. Yeah, we got, I think we signed four right now. I'm in the works of signing another kid, and I bet a couple others reach out we're interested in playing. So kind of like I talked about earlier, we're in that adjustment period, and so we're excited to get some new faces around. We got a guy from Webster, um, Kyle. He seems very committed, very excited for some playing time. So um, we'll see what he's capable of. But we got a couple, a couple utility guys in the mix. They're very open to playing whatever positions get them playing time and you know they're excited and a couple of them even said they wanted to pitch I, the zach kid we signed he seems eager to pitch so we're excited to see what he can do in the mountain awesome what do you think about the 2026 state bid coming up for shockby obviously new Prague and shockby going to be a couple of the main host sites the Joe, obviously one of the best places to play at, not only in the DRS, but in the state. So what's it like playing at the Joe? And then in a couple of years here, what's it going to be like having that state tournament back in town? It's going to be wonderful, especially for Shock P and New Prague, just the towns alone. I've been playing baseball for a long time all over the state, you know, all over the Midwest. And I've seen a lot of really good fields and it's a really cool experience. But when you step into the Joe, it's, it's a stadium and it's very, very beautiful field. And, you know, I get calls from a lot of other teams that want to come play at our field, play us at our field. So, you know, it's got that reputation around the league and, you know, it's, it's only a good positive thing so that people get to experience it. And yeah. What's it like having it as your uh, home field? You get to play on a pristine. I know I've seen rankings all over uh, uh, X or Twitter, whatever you want to call it, but usually the Joe comes within the top 10 or right around that number. And that's where it should be. It's To us, we are very grateful. It is a luxury that we are very grateful for. And, you know, we take good care of it ourselves. We're out there before the game's getting ready after the games. And even after practices, we're – out there with the high school and the the shock p indians and the legion team and we're all just we want to keep it pristine we want it to have that reputation and something that we we don't take very lightly we're very proud of that field as the uh season comes up here you know when this airs we're only going to be a week away but kind of the build up right now what's it like inside i don't want to say inside the locker room more or less but kind of within that team personnel that the shockby coyotes have what's the uh vibe like for for your team oh well, so far so good you know the, the guys are welcoming in the new guys very well a lot of people are eager to get out and we've been you know hitting a little bit throwing a little bit but as we get closer we're going to ramp up the full practices and try to get a full squad there not just when guys are available and you know, vibes are good. Everyone's excited. We're ready for baseball to start. I mean, tomorrow's going to be 75. I know we're recording this on the 11th right now, but we've had that warm weather all winter. Everyone has been wanting to play ball, and we finally have a year where games are going to be starting up, and we're excited for it. Definitely a lot different than last year. I know that first game was 30-degree temperatures, 40-mile-an-hour winds. Everybody's in a, a sweatshirt or a crew neck, one thing or another. Baseballs are you know, leaving the yard, but a lot better year this year for uh, hopefully everybody across the league. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I'm excited to uh, see what you guys can do this year. Is there anything else that you want to toss in, maybe a couple plugs for Shockby Baseball, either Class B or Class C, maybe yourself as we uh, wind things up here? I just want to say thank you for having me on. I, we're very excited to get some baseball out rolling. Excited to hear what the DRS has in store for us this year. And, you know, good luck to the competition, but it's time to play ball. It's time to play ball. Time to play ball. That's right. Well, thank you very much. That was Ben Friedenberg, the manager of the Shakopee Coyotes. That will do it for our 2024 DRS Hot Stove Show. I want to thank everybody for tuning in. Ben, thank you for joining me once again. I appreciate it to all the managers across the board and to everybody that listened. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. Can't wait to see you at the ballpark. And uh, basically, go DRS Baseball. We're looking forward to seeing everybody at the ballpark this year. The 2024 DRS Hot Stove Show is sponsored by The Double Wide, locally owned and operated, located at 421 St. Joseph Street, New Market. Open seven days a week with live music, bingo, raffles, and always a good time in downtown New Market.
and by Innovative Graphics, your one-stop shop for all things that you need to get you and your team ready to look your best on and off the field this year. Reach out to Jeremy Heidkamp and Gary Shopper for custom uniforms and apparel for local teams and local businesses at 952-926-2441.